Hey, what is up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by, well, you guys. So welcome, everybody, joining live around the world as well as after the fact. Today is the second playthrough of Field Commander Napoleon, designed by Dan Verson and published by, well, Dan Verson Games. So it's going to be a good one. I streamed this last week. It was more of a learn with me, I think. Uh, for the first time in history, I tried something different. Wasn't super thrilled with it. So I wanted to do it again, do it a proper, give it a proper teach. And uh, let's not make any mistakes, or at least not too many today. All right. So it should be a good time. Uh, Field Commander Napoleon was originally designed, uh, published, I should say, 2011, 2012. Uh, solo only game uh, should be a good time I think so so uh, appreciate all the support all the patrons who choose to support the show without them this isn't happening so big thank you to all of them and if you guys do enjoy the stream today I would appreciate you guys giving it a thumb down below your choice up or down I prefer up but your choice uh, subscribe to the channel hit the uh, notification so you get notified whenever we go live and last but not least if you do want to join the herd and support the show there if you think the content that I create here on heavy cardboard is worth a buck or two a month I certainly would appreciate that go to pledgehc.com and you can support the show there all right it's gonna be a good time today all right I uh, it's gonna be a tough battle uh, Napoleon did not have it easy. Today we are doing the Prussian campaign. So it's... The Russian reinforcements are intimidating. I have not played this campaign. Um, but I've been looking at it this morning. And I gotta be honest with you guys. Uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry is what Napoleon needs to do. Uh, because after... Let's see. No... Yeah, after three turns, it's going to get really difficult, all right? Uh, the first round's going to be a big battle, so let's get into it, shall we? Uh, I'm going to do a kind of an overview of how to play at the very beginning, and then some of this I'm going to walk through, like the battles. The battle's going to take place very early, so it kind of makes sense to go through it as the game goes on. That's kind of my MO when it comes to these solo games as opposed to doing a full front end teach kind of makes sense so we can get into it so if you guys are ready i'm certainly ready let's get into it shall we all right field commander napoleon all right so what is it you guys here are looking at well we have essentially three different boards is what this game is going to be played on all right we have the campaign board right here so we're going to go over what the campaign board is to begin with well we have the area divided into certain or the map divided into certain areas as you can see and then there are setup and specific rules depending on what campaign it is that you're doing now i've chosen we're going to do the 1806 1807 campaign so we are only doing the top one up there okay now you're going to notice a bunch of counters down here but i have them placed there as reminders for when they come out etc etc i'll go into that as we go along so, as I mentioned, we have setup as well as rules for victory and defeat. So what are the rules here for victory and defeat? I'll get into that here in a little bit. So we have the setup here. We have the map broken down into different areas and it's, it's area movement. So whether it's here in Dresden, moving to Berlin, to Danzig, etc., etc. On the map itself, we have particular cities marked by these locations out here. And there are other cities that are victory point or uh, victory condition areas that we're going to need to be able to uh, claim as the game goes on. Then there are stacks of units. Now, I realize with the top down camera, it just looks like a unit. This one is just one. However, these Prussians, uh, there's a lot of them there, as you can see. And there are a bunch of French forces there, and then there are more French forces here, and then Ney is back here in Munich by himself. 
Then over here we have the sequence of play, which is what we're going to be following as the game goes along. Then we have the resupply. When we get into resupplies, these numbers will come into play, uh, obviously, as we go along. Now, we both start with six supply at the beginning of the game. We have the turn track down here. Now, the game will end, come hell or high water, at the end of seven rounds or at the end of seven turns, no matter what. And if the game ends and I have not completed my objective, I will lose. And there are three different levels of success. This is, historically, when Napoleon has completed the objectives that are in the game. If I do an inferior job, I will have completed it then, or failed altogether. And if I did a superior job, or I did a better job than Napoleon, then I will have completed it by the end of this year, here. All right, then we have reinforcements. Now, during December 1806, this stack, this stack, a whole bunch of Russians are going to come in, and they're going to come in in this area here. But that's everything that you're looking at on that board. Then off board, we have more supply, and we have more battle plans here, all right? Then up above, we have the, uh, the games or the, the Prussian fortifications and garrisons. Then we have my garrisons and fortifications that I'm going to be able to recruit, and then various recruits that I'm going to be able to, well, recruit as the game goes on. Now, as units get destroyed or lost, I'm going to be able to re-recruit them. I will put them up above, up there. Hopefully we don't lose any, but realistically we're going to. Then in the two cups here, we have random draws for the enemy's battle plans in this cup. And then whenever we have to draw reinforcements for them, they will come from this cup. All right. So that's everything that you're looking at out here on that board. Then we have our die. So we're going to be ro uh, rolling quite a, few, uh, quite a few times as the game goes along. And then there are the other two boards, as you can see here. Now we have a battle board here, and then we have a help player help sheet over here. Now the battle board is exactly as you could imagine. It's where the battles are actually going to take place. We're going to place all of the units wherever the battles are taking place onto this board and the battles will actually take place here on this board. Over here in the bottom left hand corner, I have what are called my insights, which if Napoleon is present during a battle, I'll be able to possibly use these insights or special little rule breakers that will help me. And then just like the game has their random battle plans, I have battle plans here that I'm going to be able to choose to be able to implement on certain units. We have stock battle plans, meaning the enemy will do any of these if they do not have a specific randomly assigned battle plan. And I also have these as defaults if I have not assigned a battle plan to any of my units as well. A little holding box down here for Napoleon, because Napoleon doesn't actually take part in the battles. He just makes the battles better for the French side. Then over here on the player help sheet, well, it's exactly as you might could imagine a help sheet is. It's kind of a player aid. It doubles as a player aid as well as uh, a place to be able to put various uh, markers. So whenever we have battles, the number of battle turns will be marked here with the little battle turn indicator here. Our fog of war chart that we're going to have to roll for, or I should say the enemy will have to roll for. Any scouts that we have will actually be and I will show you guys this. It's a little bit, I will bring it over to here so you guys can see. Oops, my bad, hold on one second. Let's try that again, shall we? My bad. Zoom that out is what we were trying to do. Let's try that again. There we go, we have our scouts over here, which will force re-rolls if I so desire. As I mentioned, the battle turns over here. Our formations for both us as well as the enemy will be in either line or column formation, which will give advantages and disadvantages for certain things. If the battle takes place and makes it all the way to this withdrawal, then I'm going to have to roll on the withdrawal chart here. 
and the number of battle plans for the, each side. The French, myself, I will get one battle plan. The enemy will get three battle plans. And then for battles, we have our sequence that takes place right there. So that's everything that you're looking at over here. But what is it we're actually trying to do in the game? Well, that all depends on the specific scenario that we're playing. So we are set up and ready to rock and roll for the 1806 campaign. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see, I have a big force here in Warsburg. I have a big force here in, I think it's called Jena. Uh, and then the Prussians also have a big force here in Jena. So this is where there's going to be a battle that takes place uh, here in October 1806. All right. But we have defeat here says, I must always hold Munich, Dresden, Berlin from the end of uh, November 1806 onward. So Munich, Dresden, and Berlin. So by the end of November 1806, I have to hold those three cities and I must hold them throughout the remainder of the game or I lose immediately. Okay, all right. Well, then, starting in December 1806, all these reinforcements will come in for the two sides, but then I must hold Warsaw from the end of December 1806, so I must hold this, and keep in mind, all those reinforcements are going to be coming in this area, or the campaign ends in defeat. So what are my objectives? Well, they're all cities. So I not only have to hold those three, but I also have to hold Leipzig, uh, Leipzig, Prague, Warsaw, Friedland, and Danzig. And when I do, the game ends. The question is, when can I do it? Well, hopefully as well as Napoleon did. All right. So there we go. All right. So how do you play the game? Well, we follow this sequence of play. And the game does an excellent job of walking us through this. However, there are lots of little steps within it. So step one, advance the turn counter. Okay, easy enough. Then moves. All of my units can move, and you can freely move your units. Now, Napoleon must be with an army. An army is at least one of these chits out here, okay? If he's ever somewhere where there is no army, the game ends immediately. So probably should keep him with units. All right, so moving. Well, moving is pretty simple. If they are engaged with the enemy, they cannot move. They're basically locked down. Okay, so this stack and is locked down by that stack. However, I have this stack, and you can always move to an adjacent area. So all of these units here in Warsburg can move to Munich, to Bamberg. They can move to, I can't read that, Magdeburg, or join the party that's going to go on here in Jena. And that's probably what they're going to end up doing. So it gives you an idea. I'd like to say that that was on purpose, and well, that was on purpose. All right, so you can always move to an adjacent area. So after I am done with my moves, then the next step is resolve battles. Well, resolve battles are pretty simple. You can resolve them in any order that you wish. It's my honor to choose. So for instance, if I were to move some over here and move a couple over here, I would have two battles. What order do I choose to do them in? That's up to me. All right, easy enough. So then we actually go through the battles, which I'm not going to do right now. We will do that when we actually go through the battle resolution. Then you can do what's called forced march, which is a free move. Again, sort of free. You have supply points for every unit that you choose to move to an adjacent area, again, that is not engaged with an enemy, then can do what's called a force march or move to an adjacent area for one supply point per unit. Okay, easy enough. So you can force march and then force another battle and then you'll have to battle again. So okay, we'll go through that when the time comes. Then we resupply. And our resupply, because we are playing the 1806 campaign, says I'm going to gain seven supply points. It doesn't matter. The previous playthrough that I did, it depends on the number of cities I held. In this case, it doesn't. I'm just going to get seven added to whatever number that is. And you are limited 
uh, well, essentially to the number of chits, but you're never going to, you're not limited. So it can be from zero on up to however many supply points that you have. So that is the end of the French turn. At the end of the French turn, in theory, I will remember to turn this over to the enemy side like so, and then the enemy gets to take their turn. Well, what does their turn consist of? Well, they get enemy orders. Okay, what does that mean? Well, for each of their groups, they're going to be randomly split into groups of four counters apiece. Okay, then I'm going to roll based on this chart. Now, I may spend some supply points for them, may be forced to spend some supply points, which will adjust their die roll, uh, whether it's one or two, and then they will do whatever it says, and then there is a predetermined order in which how they move, et cetera, et cetera, if they move and all that. So we'll go through all those steps when the time gets there. Then if they have engaged the French forces, my forces, then we will resolve a battle just like we have done possibly twice before earlier in that turn. Then after that, the enemy will resupply. So first off, uh, here it says roll for each city not held by the French. Huh. So it behooves me to hold these cities so that they are not rolling for that because they're either going to get fortifications, garrisons, reinforcements, or more supply points, which are bad for me. Okay? All right. Then after that, we then start back over by advancing the turn marker, do it all over until either I have failed in my objectives, I have reached all of my objectives or Napoleon's by himself, or we make it to the end of the track and I have not done so and I either win or lose. So in a nutshell, that's how you play Field Commander Napoleon. Now obviously there are quite a few details not covered in all that, but I think that does a pretty good job of getting us ready to rock and roll for the game. So without further ado, I am going to bring up the camera I will bring up the chat, and yes, soldiers march on their stomachs, or cocaine. True. Yeah, World War I, about a hundred years after this, but yeah. All right, by the way, Paul, got your tea, thank you for that. All right, so a couple things before we get started. First off, who are you picking? Are you picking the French, i.e. me, I'm on a roll, just so you're saying, just so you know. And if you are picking me, are you choosing uh, to where I do a superior job, a historical job, or an inferior job? Or are you picking the enemy, those dirty Prussians and Russians? Huh. So, let me know. Place your bets now. Over under on Glory to Realms, I'm probably going to be a little bit freer with this. I'm a lot more comfortable with how things work in the game now. So I'm going to set that for... Let's see, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six turns, four and a half over under on Glory to Rome. All right? Yeah, something, something, land war in Russia, I agree. All right, let's do this, shall we? Cheers, y'all. All right, let's go. So, first things first, advance the turn marker. We're going to flip that back over to our side, so... There we go. So I said seven turns. I lied at six because the very first thing you do is advance the turn marker. Okay. Done. Now what? All right. So now we're up to moves. Okay. So I have this massive force going up against this massive force here. We are definitely going to move a bunch of our troops. We're going to vacate Würzburg is basically what's going to happen here. Uh, so I don't know a lot historically about this time period and about Napoleon, but when Tony was my buddy and we were co-hosts and everything, uh, he told me how big of a deal Ney was. So bringing Ney in kind of makes a lot of sense to me. Now, they can only move to adjacent areas, okay? But I have to control the city, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all of my troops that are here because I have Bamberg in between, so these guys cannot make it back to Munich. But what I think will happen 
is I'm going to take this 6-4 guy, all right, uh, Augereau, and he's going to hang out, and basically the war is done for him. He's going to hang out there. Is he? Hold on one second. Why don't I recruit at the end of this and bring, oh, better yet, why don't we do that? I lied. The war is not over for Augereau, okay? Ney is going to come up. I am vacating Munich. Am I? Yes, I am. The reason is, during my French resupply, I'm going to be a... Oh, hold on one second. No, I think I'm doing this the wrong order. Ney's going to stay there what I'm what I'm trying to think of is I need to be able to hold Munich okay and during resupply I can recruit I want to make sure that I get this right so I don't screw this up you can uh, recruit new forces only areas containing French forces so therefore I have to leave Ney there or bring Augeron the You know what? Actually, I think what we're going to do is Ney is going to move over here to Pilsen. He's going to work on to getting into Prague. That makes more sense. And now, temporarily, Augereau is going to move to the back. This way, I hold that so that I can recruit forces here, and then Augereau can then move out. There we go. That's what we're going to do. All right? So, good. So, moved, moved. They are done. All right. So now, what I think we're going to do is... I'm going to move these two infantry up here to have a battle in uh, Madeburg. And then all of these guys, these three cavalry and the really strong infantry, uh, I got a fever. That's the fever. Get it? Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and they're going to join the party there. I am done with my moves. Fini. So that's done. Now we resolve battles. All right. So I think because this is going to be the first battle that we're going to fight, we're going to start with the easier of the two battles. So here's what happens first and foremost. We're going to take this little battle marker that's right here, and we're going to place it as a reminder, where is this battle taking place? So then, you know what? Ooh. Yep. Mm. Hold on. I said I was done. I may have lied. Nope. That's it. All right, so these guys are going to come down onto the board there. Okay, so now that we have done this, now we need to start the turn sequence for battles, okay? Let me see if I can get this one right. Hey, there we go. All right, so step one is we have to roll for the fog of battle or a fog of war. So it says, if the enemy has four to six supply points, they have six, they get a plus two on their roll, but they lose two supply points. Okay, so what does that mean? It means we're going to take two of their supply points and expend them. Then we have to roll and they get a plus two. And then how they roll dictates what it is that happens. So here we go. We're looking for low numbers. Uh, that is not, in fact, a low number. That is a 9. 9 plus 2 is actually 11. Add an enemy garrison to the battle. Well, that sucks. I took a risk. Oh, well. And you'll notice that the battle will only be two battle turns. So we're going to take our battle turn marker, and we're going to put that right there. All right. So we need to take an enemy garrison from up here, and that's going to come down here into that area there. All right, 
So now that that's done, we have rolled for fog of war and done whatever it says. Then envelopment check. Well, and here's the bummer. Here's what I'm bummed about is each of these counters have two numbers. They have an initiative number at the top and they have a combat value at the bottom. Initiative is whether or not they're going to be activated is the top number, and their combat value at the bottom is exactly their combat value. Now, before this garrison was there, you'll notice that uh, Wurttemberg, or uh, I'm sorry, Wurttemberg, 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 yeah. All right, the Prussian unit here had a combat value of three. Envelopment check is check to see if either side has triple the combat value of anyone else, of the other side. I had 10. 10 is more than triple, three. If that happens, all of the enemy units are destroyed. Enemy being either the Prussians and Russians or the French, depending on what it is. But because they got a garrison added, they now have eight. 10 is not triple eight. Ergo, the envelopment check fails. That's a bummer. That would have been a really easy victory. Well, that's a bummer. Okay. So we move on. Determine the battle plan quantities. Okay. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention was Napoleon was rolling in in the big battle. He's not going to be here. So what does that mean? That means these numbers will not change. It means I get one battle plan. The enemy gets three battle plans. Okay. Buy additional French battle plans. Now I can, because each battle plan, I could play two supply points to get an additional battle plan, or I could pay five to get an additional two battle plans. But I only have two units, and I already have one. So if I'm going to buy one, I'm only going to buy one, because you can only have one battle plan per unit. So it kind of makes sense. But, do we want to do that? And the answer is, I don't know. I think the answer is no. Yeah, no, I am not going to buy an additional battle plan. So that's it. That's the number of battle plans that we're going to have. Then select insight counters. Well, you can only select insight counters and selecting these replaces one of your battle plans. So in other words, I have one, in theory, I would be able to select one of these insights in lieu of a battle plan for this battle. However, you can only select insights if Napoleon is present. And as I mentioned, he's not up here. He's actually there in Jena for the big battle. So therefore, since he's not here, I cannot select insights. Okay, now I have to place French forces. All right. So there are three different areas on a battle board for each side. There is the French front, enemy front, French approach, enemy approach, and the French reserve, enemy reserve. Okay. All of your units, up to four, can start in the approach area. The rest have to be back in the reserve, and that is a maximum. So when I place these, I'm choosing to put them here in the approach area. And then I have a decision. Do I want them either in line or column? Now the reason that's going to matter is depending on what, uh, what battle plan they have associated, this activation number, I'm going to have to roll that number lower or low, uh, that number or lower to activate whatever the battle plan is. However, you'll notice to fire, it says if you're in line, meaning how they are here, you don't have to roll, whereas on marching, if they're in column, you don't have to roll. Well, I have a decision to make on what to do here. And what I've decided to do here is I'm going to actually place both of my units in column because marching is going to be what they're going to be doing first for the most part, so therefore having them in column makes a lot of sense. So I am done placing the French forces. Now the enemy, I have to place the enemy forces. All right, now, garrisons and fortifications are in very specific areas. Fortifications will always be back here in the reserve. Garrisons will always be in the approach. Now, these are what's called 
fixed forces. Oh, I forgot to bring the camera up here. Let me do that. All right. Garrison, anything in this, nah, not anything, but garrisons and fortifications are what's called fixed uh, units, meaning they stay here, they stay here, they will never move from a battle. Whereas mobile units are everything but that, which are cannons, so artillery, cavalry, as well as infantry. These will be in various places and they will move. These do not count against the stack limit or the four limit, as you can see here, for the unit there. These will always be placed in line, as will any fortifications. However, it is going to be a maximum. There will be four units, all placed in column here in the approach area. Everybody else will be placed in the enemy reserve. Okay? So there we go. So I have pr uh, placed the enemy forces. All of that is done for the pre-battle, as you can see there. All right. Next, insight activation. Well, I don't have any insights, so there's nothing to activate. Then select and place uh, French battle plans. Well, let's go ahead and come on back over here. How many battle plans do we get? I get one because I chose not to purchase any others. So what are the battle plans? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So there are the available battle plans that I can purchase with my one battle plan, and I will. You must always, and there's no reason you would ever not. Now, there's a bunch of information on these various formations, or on these various battle plans. Now, these words that are here are just what it is, and then you always activate them top to bottom, if at all possible. So, in advance is exactly what you would think it is. You move forward one, you, one area. And then you'll notice that this one says only cav. So only cavalry can do that. Well, I only have infantry, so therefore probably not going to choose that one. Then it says only if you are two or more away from the enemy, and if in column, no roll. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's go back and let's take a look. Remember, there are activation numbers. I have to roll that or lower to activate that unit. If I fail, the unit just doesn't activate. They just mill about waiting for orders. It's like their orders never got there. So you need to make sure that whenever you are trying to give them battle plans, whether it is standard battle plans or some of these, that they're able to be activated or hopefully you'll roll well in order to be able to do that. Okay? All right. So that is, so flank here says, if in column, I don't have to roll. Well, my units are in column. Nice. Then they get an advance. Then advance and a shock minus three. That is good because that hurts the enemy. And then I get to attack on top of that. That's probably what we're going to go with, but let's keep going on. Push says, if in column, no roll, okay, and then, then you switch to column, whether you were in column or not, you switch to it, and then you advance, and you get a shock of minus four, also a good thing, unless you're the enemy, that's bad. Engage, if in column, no roll, advance, shock, minus two, good, then line, switch to line, and then attack at a plus one, plus one. I'll get into that in details in a little bit. Then down here, we have if in line, no roll for volley. And then if it's infantry, attack at a plus four, plus zero. If it cavalry, plus two, plus two. Nice. Square. Only infantry, this is only cavalry, all right? So those two are kind of the opposites. You don't have to roll, period. And then pre-attack, meaning before the enemy takes their turn, the cavalry gets to attack at a plus four, plus zero. Excellent. Grape shot. Well, this is artillery, so obviously it's only cannons, okay, and only fortifications, so you're allowed to assign this to a fortification. I don't have either of those, so this isn't going to happen, but you don't have to roll, but your attack is plus two, plus one. Excellent. Prepare says add to a battle plan. Okay, so you get to stack this onto a uh, battle plan. Normally only one unit, or a unit can only have one battle plan. Prepare breaks that rule. Rule, You don't have to roll, and you resolve this first before the enemy takes their turn. So it's a preemptive shot. 
Okay, cool. And by shot, I mean you activate it, whatever it is, top to bottom. And then formation here says no roll, and at any time I can change one to three formations. Well, when they're in column, they're a lot more vulnerable than when they're in line. So that's something that may come into play in some of the bigger battles. Okay? All right. So there's that. All right. So those are the available battle plans. And you know what? I think taking flank makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go ahead and choose flank as my one battle plan. Okay. Now there's some other things that we need to take into consideration here. The one other thing that I have not mentioned is on the metal, on each of these units, there is a letter assigned them, okay? And these letters are the, the quality or the skill level of those troops. Now, there are five different ranks. There are C, I'm not gonna do this for every letter because I can't. There's going from weakest, which are conscripts. So basically, you know, just farmers or whatever. So not good. So conscripts, then there are P, which are not good troops. I don't know. I can't remember what they stand for. I apologize. Then L, which are line. Then there are V, which are veterans. And then there are E, which are elite troops. Okay. And the reason those letters matter is going to be for assigning certain battle plans, so on and so forth. Now, for me, I can assign one battle plan per unit, and it's totally my choice. It's my game. I get to do this however I want. So with this flank, I'm going to actually put it onto the stronger of my two units. So I'm going to assign this to Mortier, okay, to there. So now we look back here, select and place French battle plans. That's done. Now I realize all of this is, I'm explaining a lot, but I'm kind of teaching this as I go. I'm not going to do this for every battle, obviously. Then I have to draw and assign enemy battle plans. Well, how many do I draw? I draw three. So we're going to get the little cup of mystery here. So we will draw these one at a time, one, and then we're going to assign these one at a time, okay? So, and this is just because they're going to be random. Only infantry and cavalry will be assigned any of these. So this one, and again, they have the same rules that apply. They can only get assigned one. Now, you would think, well, he only has one infantry and no cavalry, and so he should stop drawing. That's not necessarily the case, because there are other little rule breakers that are in here that I may draw. I did not on that one. And I did not on that one. So it's moot when it comes up. And actually, I'll go ahead and find one in here real quick just to show you guys. There we go. So if I had found one that is written horizontally like this, this says, ignore the first hit inflicted on the enemy. In other words, the first hit that I make on him, he, this, uh, this battle plan kind of absorbs it, and then it would go back into the cup like so for a random draw later on. But I didn't draw it. If you draw any of those, they do not count against that three, so you continue drawing. So drawing those sucks if you're me, not so much if you voted for the Prussians and the Russians. As it is, we assign that to them, and this will go ahead and go back in there. We'll shuffle those up for later and put it back there. So we have now drawn and assigned enemy battle plans, all right? Next, resolve enemy battle plans. Now, if they have a battle plan assigned to them, those will activate first. Then anyone that does not have a battle plan assigned to them will choose one of these depending on A, the type of unit, and B, depending on where, how far away they are from the enemy. So let's go over this a little bit more in detail. So anybody that has a battle plan assigned will activate first. It says, if line, no roll. He's in column. So in order to even activate that battle plan, he has to roll his activation no number 
or lower. His activation number is five, so he needs to roll a five or lower, or this just goes away and he doesn't do anything. All right, so that is going to be a five or lower. So we come over here, we roll. That is a three, so it activates. Okay, easy enough. So then, infantry attacks. He can't. Okay. And the reason he can't attack is these are musket, ball and musket. They only have a range of zero for melee or one. I am further than one, so he's done. He is activated. That goes away. All right. The next one, the garrison. The garrison will attack. They will do combat if there is an enemy a melee, zero, or in one. As it is, I told you, they never move, so he's done activating. The French, or I'm sorry, the enemy side is done. Okay? So then, resolve the French battle plans. Okay. So now, I choose what to do. And I will choose... I may have made a mistake in this. Hold on one second. Hmm. Now, it's always voluntary on whether or not I wish to activate my battle plans. I can always just hold if I wish. Um, hmm. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? If he activates, he has to activate his entire thing. He must do that. And you know what? We are going to do this. Yes. So I'm going to activate uh, Lons. So he is going to march. If in column, no roll. Advance or retreat. Advances that. Done. Okay, he's done. Yes, I'm aware of this, Chris. Um, it's not useless, however. The question is, do I want to take the risk? And the answer is... Mm. Mm. I did take a risk because I anticipated him advancing because then I would be able to shock him and hurt him and possibly kill him this turn. But as it is, I won't be able to do that. So if I do the flank, only if the enemy is two or more away, and he is, and if in column no roll, he could advance and then advance at a shock, but there's nobody there, but then he could attack. He could get a free shot. But if I do that, he's now within range of both of those. So you know what? I've decided to not engage. I've decided to not assign that battle plan. He's done. So now we go into a route check. Again, it's basically like an envelopment check, but what that means is, is either side three times the other. If so, all they do is retreat for their respective sides. Obviously, that's not the case, so we can move on. We advance the battle counter. Done. So now we start back over at the beginning of the battle turn here, okay? All right. So now, insight activation, I have no insights. Select and place French battle plans. Now Dapper Fox in chat is asking, oh, can you hold a turn and keep the strategy? I could. Or, you know, every, every battle turn, you get to choose a new battle plan or a new selection of battle plans. So in this case, we're going to do the exact same thing. Because come hell or high water, we are going to attack no matter what. Okay. Now I could assign him here to lands, but it's possible that he gets hurt slash killed by this unit. 
So we're going to assume that this unit is going to move forward. Okay, so there we go. I've assigned my battle planes. Now we have to do the same for the enemy. So I'm going to randomly draw. So there is one wedge. So we will assign that first there and there. All right, so he got officers. It says all enemies get plus three on their activation roll. That means he's at an eight instead of a three. Enemies are always these guys, even though they're drawing and technically I would be the enemy of them. They are termed the enemy, so there's that. Now, I drew three, but one of these doesn't count for his three, so I redraw. And, oh God, ignore the first hit on the inflicted, uh, inflicted on the end. This is a terrible draw. And so those now go away. That sucks. Okay. <laughs> Resolve the enemy battle plans. Okay. Wedge. Switch to, well, first off, he has to activate. He, it does not say anything like automatically activating, so therefore he's at five, but all enemies get a plus three, so he's actually at an eight. All right. So we're going to roll this. He rolled an eight eight or lower, so he's good, it activates. Switch to column, advance, done. Then attack at a plus two, plus two. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, he has a combat value of three. The plus two, plus two means the first number is, adds to this number, so he actually hits on a five or less. But the second number, the other plus two, means if he hits on a five or lower, he hits one hit, or he lands one hit. If you hit lower than the second number, so in this case, it's a five slash three. I'm sorry, five slash two, because it's plus two on both. So five or two. If he hits on a two or lower, he inflicts two hits, all right? Now, the only one in range is going to be this one, but I would get to choose what units I assign this to. And a moment. Let me, I stand corrected. It always is going to be assigned to the lowest skill level. All right, so the L or the V, if these were in the same area, th this guy would absorb the hit first, okay? All right, so now, He's going to attack at a plus two, plus two, so he's at a five, two. So we want a six or higher, unless you're a terrible person and rooting for the enemy. That's a four, so that's one hit. That one hit is going to be on lands, so we flip it over. If there are numbers on the adjacent, on the opposite side, then it survives and it can take one hit, and then if it takes another hit, it is lost. However, there are other units Specifically, there are cavalry, there are cannons, and there are recruits that if they take a single hit, they just die. And when they die, they will go back up here for me to be able to be recruit them at a different time. Whereas if it's the game and they die, they go into the cup of reinforcements and they may or may not get drawn again. So Lance took the hit and that's that. Then it says if the enemy is at zero or one, meaning melee or within distance, switch to line. Which kind of sucks for me because if they are in column, when we get to shock, they automatically fail their shock check. So that's kind of a bummer. All right? So he is done. So this will go away. This will go away. However, he still has this, and we're just going to bring this down here as a reminder. So now I, the, the French get to resolve theirs. So first things first, what do we want to do? What we're going to do is we're going to activate Mortier. Okay, I could do this in either order, but there's going to be a very particular reason why I'm going to do this, why I'm choosing to do this in the order that I am. Yeah. Ah, this sucks. Oh, this is bad. All right. So only if the enemy is two away, 
he is, good. If in column, I don't have to roll to activate, awesome. So then he advances, done. Then advance at a shock of minus three, advance. All right, so now let's talk about shock. Anytime a unit, whether it's my own or an enemy, joins an area that has units, there's going to be a shock check. In other words, ah, new troops, it's scary. So whether or not the other, the opposing troops, the troops that were just advanced upon, whether they freak out and bug out and get injured. So what happens here? A shock check is they have to, if they are in column, if the enemy is in column, I'm sorry, if either side is in column, whether it is a infantry or cavalry in column, they automatically fail their shock check. So what happens when you fail a shock check? They, get dam they take one hit, and in addition to that, they must retreat one area. If they, if they retreat to an area that is full based on that number, they're just destroyed. Cool. However, this guy got switched to line, so it's not an automatic failure. That's kind of a bummer. But the flank says shock minus three. So this three drops to a zero. It's an automatic fail. You can't roll a zero on a 10-sided uh, die. It's one to 10. The zero is a 10. So therefore, he automatically fails that. That is not a hit. That is a shock check. So he takes a hit. So we're going to flip that over like so. And then he must retreat one area. Done. Okay. So that's good. But then I get to attack. Now, whether or not I hit, does not matter. And the reason for this, uh, it does not matter. Reason is, he has close ranks. Ignore the first hit on the enemy. And because he does not have a subscript, meaning a second number that I could roll to inflict two hits, this is going to absorb that one hit. So it doesn't matter. So that goes away. All right. So then, a route check. Well, his combat value is seven, my combat value is eight, nobody's tripled the other, so advance the counter. Done. All right, well, good news, bad news. Oh, hold on, that was him. So then I can activate him, what do I want to do? Well, I can't fire because he's not within one. So I could advance, so I will, and if in column I don't have to roll. So I advance there, but that's the end of the combat because we have made it to the withdrawal spot. Well, that kind of sucks. All because I didn't keep one more unit here to make it triple. Because he rolled that 11 earlier to add the garrison, that changed this from being a envelopment to he actually survived. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, we then have to come over here and look at the withdrawal chart. So the withdrawal chart says... Depending on what happens, one of those things is going to happen. So we're going to roll and let's see. So in this case, I would like to rejoin or better yet, the enemy retreats. Okay. So that's good. I think I'd prefer a rejoin. So a one or a two. Could we, could we roll a one or a two, please? Nope. That'd be a four. So what does a four say? A four says enemy retreat. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, I actually have to look that one up. All right, enemy retreat. Return to the Napoleon counter if uh, present and the French forces to the campaign maps battle area. Destroy all enemy static forces. Oh, awesome. This is a static force, remember? Garrisons and reserves are static forces. So what does that mean? It means that gets destroyed, that goes back there. And then these troops will come back out here. Now notice that's still damaged there. Okay. All right. So then after that, return all mobile enemy forces, pieces that can move. So there to ran one randomly selected enemy controlled or uncontrolled area adjacent to the battle area. If there are no adjacent enemy areas, uh, enemy controlled or uncontrolled, destroy the mobile enemy force. So this actually worked out really, really well, kind of, in my benefit. So now, let's see what are the adjacent areas. We have Hamburg, Berlin, the Jena, and Würzburg. 
So we're going to roll to see what random. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll re-roll on a uh, nine or ten. That's a five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that sucks. <laughs> so this troop here will then come up and join the party there. So it's just one more troop I'm going to have to deal with. All right. Um, and there is one other small thing to check. Just a moment. Okay, what I'm checking is at the end of an enemy's resupply, that's when these flip back over. So it does not flip back over because we are still up here. We are not down there. So therefore we are at the reserve battles, okay? All right, so Dapper Fox, isn't there a line between that region and the one to the right? Yes, there are. See? So, but he has to bug out from where the battle took place. So there, 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 or there. One, two, three. Oh, check that. There's that. Oh, so he actually is in that area. Good call. I see what you mean. So actually, they're here. All of these guys are in Jenna. Good call. Good call. All right. Yep because of the splayed stack. Yeah, good call. All right, so that battle is done. So we take this off the board and we take the battle turn off the board. Now, do we have any battles left to uh, resolve? Oh boy, do we. So here we go. So all of these guys are going to come out and I'm just going to splay them out so you guys can see all of their troops. They have a lot of cavalry. And then I'm going to grab all of mine and put them down here so you guys can see. This just in, we also have a lot of cavalry. So, there, Leipzig instead, uh, uh, instead of Jenna. Where is that? Yeah, it's Jenna, right? Yeah, that is, okay. All right. That's a big battle coming up. All right, so Napoleon is here. So what does that mean? That means I get three battle plans per what Napoleon says instead of the one. So first things first. Kind of doing this out of order, but that's all right. All right. So those are our troops that are out here. That is a massive battle that's about to take place. Wow. All right, so first things first, we have to roll for Fog of War. And he has four supply points, so he's going to get a plus two. So we're going to go ahead and spend two of his supply points. And this is always a must. It is not a voluntary. All right, so he's down to two supply points. And now here, he gets a plus two. So let's go ahead and roll. And I do not have any scouts yet to be able to force re-rolls. He rolled a six, and a six says it will be four combat turns, battle turns, okay, and then I can move one mobile French force to this battle. Really? Huh. Huh. So now, I want to double check, and it does not specify that it must be adjacent to that. This is the first time I've actually rolled this one, so... You can't move into Napoleon, but it does not specify. It could be anybody. That includes Ney. Or Mortier, if I want. You know what? 
Oh. I kind of like the fact that Ney is already on his way to Prague. So you know what? I think we're going to go ahead and bring Mortier in. So why not? So I'm going to add him to the battle. And it's four battle turns. All right. Awesome. So that is the fog. Now we have to do a envelopment check. All right. So here comes some math. A moment. Let me, because I... This should be easy enough. It's combat values. It's only the big numbers. So 6 and 4 is 10, 20. I can't imagine I'm going to have tri triple, but let's count. 10, 20, 27, 30. He has 39. And I'm at, and you don't count the, the superscript number or subscript number, 13 and 10 is 23, 29, 34, 44, 50. 60, 69, and 7 is 76. And what number did I say for them? That's 10, 20, oh, and more than 30. So there you go. So envelopment has failed. Okay, so determine the battle plan quantity. We've already done that. Napoleon's here. Hmm. Hold on. Napoleon's here. I have three. He gets three. Then, buy additional French battle plans. I have six supply points. I can spend five to get two extra battle plans. Don't mind if we do. We're getting five battle plans. And that leaves, and that cost us five supply points. Now, why am I pointing this out? Because... Ney will be able to force march with the one supply point left into Prague to be able to hold that city. Is that what it is I want to do? Then I'm going to gain more supply points to be able to get a recruit into here. But then, if I do that, then I won't be able to force march in here to be able to take out that unit. And I do want to do that. So let me, let me back that up a little bit. We're actually going to go with four battle plans. So that cost me three of the six. So that leaves me three supply points left. That's what I decided to do instead. Okay. Oh, no. <gasps> I screwed that up, didn't I? That was a six plus two. Thank you for the correction. So let me back this up. Mortier has to come off the battlefield. Thank you. So he goes back up there. And even worse, because it's an eight, transfer two of my supply points to the enemy. Well, shoot. Good call. Ooh. I guess we're going to keep it at three battle. Oh, boy. Yep, we're going to keep it at three. So that leaves us. Three, so that would be, so that, I had six to start with, right? Yep, there we go. Yuck. Yep, all right, that is fixed that. Thank you. We're good. I got it. I got it. Yep, thanks, Chad. All right, so we're good. All right, damn it. All right, done. Grrr. All right, so in addition to that, what does that mean? That means I rolled an eight, so that's actually three battle turns, not four. Grrr. All right, so now I have to select my battle plans. I have three of them. I lost my sight. Hold on. There. Select insight counters. Napoleon is here. Let's go over the insights. All right. Okay. So sweep. Remove one to three if activated. 
Now you'll notice that this has a plus one on it. Now Napoleon's number is a three. So this plus one, you get added to the three, and then for, an, for it to activate, it must be you roll that number, uh, Napoleon's activation, or less. So I would need to roll a four or less. Remove one to three cavalry, reserve force, uh, reserve, uh, it down here in the reserve, okay? Then roll three attacks for each against the rearmost, meaning anybody that's up there in the reserve. That's tempting. It's a gamble, but tempting. Raid, I steal supply points, depending on what I roll, and it's a uh, one-time roll on that. Then morale is my forces gain a plus three on shock rolls. That is for the entire battle. So in other words, that is a de defensive thing. So if they advance, I get plus three on my shock so that they can prevent being shocked. Terrain says place all enemy forces in reserve or approach. My choice, which those kind of go hand in hand, sweep and terrain, that's kind of nice. Duration, I can make for a longer or shorter battle. Well, this battle's only three turns. That's something I may want to look into. Uh, engineers, inflict one hit on every garrison and fortification. There are none, so that doesn't apply to this battle. In the front, I can place up to three of my forces in the French front to be able to get a uh, preemptive hit. Well, I think we will go ahead and take the sweep there. That's one. And that's it. That's the only insight that we're going to do. The other two will be for battle plans. So now I have to place my troops. Okay, so I'm going to keep this over here in French Reserve. So we're going to look at my cavalry first. I'm going to leave three cavalry in reserve. So there, so it's going to be Beaumont, Grouchy, Grouchy, hey, it's Grouchy, but Grouchy, I guess. Um, and we will do Klein. Uh, no, we will do uh, Sahuk. Those will be in reserve for sure. Then... Nansute... Nansuti, Nansute, will be in the approach. Lefevre will be in the approach. Devu, Deval will be in the approach. And we will do uh, Bessier in the approach. Everybody else will be back here in the reserve because I'm only allowed four there. And then I will do like so. So there we go. That is my troops, okay? Now for him, he randomizes which four will be here in the approach. So, these first four, that's one, two, three, four. Okay. So these will be in the approach. They will all be in column. And then everybody else is in column as well. Let me double check. In reserve. Putting all the cavalry together, and yeah, I'm facing them the wrong way, sorry. Have them this way. All right, we have placed the forces, done. Now, insight activation. I'm going to remove three of my cavalry, so that potentially will be nine hits when it activates, okay? So when this activates is when that happens. So I get a plus one to Napoleon's three. This will happen every round. Hold on one second. This will happen every round until it activates. 
The other thing I'm worried about is whether or not the duration, whether or not I want to take this, because to get it a plus one, which makes it four rounds. This is a really important battle to start with. You know what? I think I will. So I actually only have one battle plan now because I've used two insights. So this is actually going to go from three. I want it to be a longer battle. That will be four. So before I roll, do anything else, that's done. So duration is done. And now the sweep at a plus one to the three. So that is a four. We're looking for a four or less. That, that failed. So that did not activate this round. Okay. So in other words, these guys are just going to hang out. Now I could advance them. I could have them do their normal thing. But then it's only when they're in reserve. But I think they're going to be held back in reserve. All right. So that is insight activation, then so, uh, draw and select a French battle plan. And I have no cannons. So my grape shot, which is my favorite thing to be able to do, I cannot do. Um, I cannot imagine that I'm actually going to do anything. But just in case, ah, uh, you know what? I don't want to, I'm not going to want anybody to advance. I'm going to want to wait until they are, you can see the whites of their eyes so that shock uh, will come into play. So, if I don't want to advance, I think a volley makes the most sense. So, I will go ahead and we will assign that here to Nansute. Okay. Okay. Done. So that is my one. And now we draw and assign the enemy battle plans. He gets three. This will always, okay. There is a very particular order in which these get assigned. And I want to go over this in detail now. This is, uh, infantry and cav only from highest skill level to lowest. And uh, da, 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 da. it is always the most forward first. So these will get assigned first, then these guys will get assigned. So drawing three. So here's one. I'm going to draw all three and then two and three. There we go. Okay. So now we look at this. They're all P's. Okay, easy enough. So now, uh, which one? Uh, how do I do this randomly? These are identical, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then nine, ten, I will just, we'll figure it out. Here we go. That's a seven, so that's going to go on, and we will go here. One, two, three. So that got assigned. Now we'll do one through three. That's six. So uh, one, uh, six here, and we'll do that one. And then one through five, and then six through ten. All right. And that goes there. Huh. All right. Well, here we go. So these three will activate before him. So let's go ahead and start with the cavalry. The cavalry uh, has to activate. He activates on a six or lower. He did activate. So cavalry advance. Done. Then advance. Done. Then switch to line. Done. Okay. Put him out there. Oh, 
that's uh, okay, done. That's, I like that. That actually works to my benefit. So then we will go here, switch to column. Oh, he has to activate first on a four or lower, sorry. Wow, uh, these guys are rolling well. All right, switch to column, he's already there. Advance, then attack at a two, plus two, plus two, two away, so he doesn't. And if at zero or one, switch to line, he doesn't, he's done. Same thing with exact same, so he needs to activate on a four or less. He activates, wow. Same thing, done. Then this guy, this will take any of the uh, automa or the, the basic ones. Advance, if they are two, if the enemy is two or further away, if in column, no roll, just advance. Done. Okay. And all of these guys are going to do the exact same thing. They're all in column. They all advance. Done. So the enemy is done. Okay. All right. So now resolve the French battle plans. Okay. Well, this should be fun. I don't want to advance. Remember I said that, right? So I want the enemy to come to me. So if that's the case, uh, Nansute is going to uh, volley. So if in line, no roll. His activation is on a 10 or lower. It's automatic, so we don't need to roll. And he is a cavalry. So his cavalry says, uh, attacks at a plus two, plus two. He's at a seven, four. He's now at a nine, six. That's good. Okay, so he's going to attack. So a six, and he kills him. Check that. He only takes one hit. So a nine or lower, and he's dead. And we have the first blood. It actually hit two hits. So if there were anything on the other side, he would have taken another hit. And it has to be here because these guys are too far away. So that was successful. That's removed. It goes into the cup there for random reinforcements. All right. Oh, good call. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Jonathan's right. So here we go. Enemy approach is limited to four. Thank you for that. So we'll do one to six to make it truly random. Thank you, because you're limited to four. Good call. All right. So one to six, left to right. This could be a lot of rolls. Okay, that's six advances, one to, one to five then, and two. So six advances and two advances. So now it'll be two, four, six, eight, okay. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, it does, okay. So two, four, that's another cavalry. And then one through threes, that's 10, the only thing I can't roll. And that is a nine, so two cavalry now advance as well. Good call, good call. There we go. Thank you, good catch. Okay, so Nansuti is done. The volley did its job, it killed the, uh, the cavalry. So now these guys are going to hold and they're going to hold. The, oof, damn it, really? Yep, that's it. And there's not going to be a uh, route, so we advance, and now insight activation. So here we go. Really would like a four or less, just saying. Please, four or less, please. There we go. Here we go. So we rolled it. Remove one to three cavalry uh, in the reserve. So these three, they're not removed from the game. Here's the good news. They're just going to come back here into Jenna like that. However, now we get three attacks against each in the rearmost. Awesome. Okay. Three attacks each in the rearmost. So I'm going to put these guys here. Okay. So we will start with the, uh, the easiest roll here. So he hits on a six, two hits, 
on a three. Both of these are P's, so it'll be my choice how to distribute the hits to begin. In fact, all of his units are P's, so there we go. They're like uh, pre-line. They're not quite line troops, which are your standard. Here we go. So charge or sweep, as it were. So here we go. A 6-3, and we get three rolls at this. So rolling sixes or lower hits, threes or lower, two hits. That's a fail on one. That is a hit. Okay, so now, why don't we go ahead and just take out the cavalry? Done. So that's, and now we have one left. Ah, failed. All right, so now that that's done, we're going to remove him off the board and put him up here so that we know that we've already taken care of that one. So now, five or three, okay? Five or less or three or less? Three hits. Come on, low numbers. There's one hit, so he will flip. That's another hit. He's dead. So now, the rearmost. We get one more here for LaSalle. Failed. All right. So then, coming over here, we will grab LaSalle and put it up here. He's done his job. His battle is done. And finally, Klein, here we go. Fives and threes. I would like one double hit and a single hit out of all that. How's that? That's not greedy. I think that's reasonable. That's a miss. All right, get that out of the way early. Um, <clears throat> Come on, Klein. All right, A hit. Not really great, but it's my choice. P, 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 or P. And I will take out the 6-4 instead of the 4-2 cavalry. Um, yeah, don't mind if I do. That cavalry's done. So, it wasn't great, but the cavalry charge did kill three units. But they're off the board. But they did kill three units. And now that this sweep is done, it was activated, it then comes back, and that is completely done. That's not bad. I'll take it. All right. So, now select uh, and place the French battle plans. So now, I think what we will do. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Um, I could make a case for... Now, I'm assuming all these guys, they are going to advance here, and all of my guys are going to want to advance. So I think I will go ahead and... Lefevre is going to be do the engage, I think. Yeah, that's good. There we go. So that is my one battle plan, and now he gets three battle plans. By the way, I should point out all of these guys are elite, I just realized, and all of these guys are veterans. Ah, that may have been a mistake. I just realized that. All right. Let's get some crappy battle plans for them. Here we go. One, two, three, and it looks like a fourth. There we go. <clears throat> Ignore the first hit. Oof. Oof. Uh, it does not matter because they're all infantry. They're all the same. So we're going to go there. This is not ideal. There and there. All right. Whew. All right. So I'll go ahead and do him first. If in line, no roll. Advance. Switch to line if there's a distance of one and then attack. So that's done. So he attacks, automatically activates, and he hits on a three or less. So big numbers. Easy enough. Come on. Really? Okay, so it's my choice on who gets hit. Let's see, will it be devout or will it be... 
it'll be the vu done okay so now if in line no roll he needs to activate on a four or less could we could we get some bigger numbers there we go he did not activate that's done here he needs a four or low or lower to activate Okay, right hand's big hand. Got it. Okay, so he didn't activate. Phew, that was good. Awesome. So now these guys all activate. They are two or further away. If in column, no roll, all these guys come up. And note, you're limited to six here. And you're not limited on any of these when coming this way or these three going that way. Okay, so here we go. We will go ahead and huh I don't know if I want to advance again now now that these guys are here I kind of want to wait till they're closer they get the first shot potentially and it keeps these guys basically out of the battle if I don't. But is shock that important? I think it is. Because they have low activation numbers. I think I'm going to. So I'm going to roll for Nansute. So activates automatically. And he's going to attack at a 7 and 4. Okay, so there we go. Big numbers right hand. Oh, try that again. Oh wait, I did that backwards. I rolled with the wrong hand. So he did, uh, he missed. That sucked. Now, uh, Bezere automatically activates and hits on a six and three respectively. There we go, that's two hits. So, one hit. And two hits. Dead. Done. So now, nobody else is going to activate. This is going to go away. Done. Route check. Now I am going to check the numbers for this. Oh, I have to ignore one hit. Shoot. Hold on. There he is. I ignore the first hit. I forgot about close ranks. Damn it. Okay, well, that's not the end of the world because now these guys can try and hit. He automatically activates. He needs to roll a five or less. Well, he's dead now. So, done. And he did not need to roll be, to activate, so he's done. He's dead for real now. All right, now we're going to check the route check. He's at three, six... 10, 17, so that's 51. I'm pretty sure I'm not there. Uh, 10, 23, 36, 46, 51. Oh, hold on. Let me do the math a little bit closer. Um, I, let me double check and make sure I'm not missing this. 3 and 8 is 11, and 3 is 14, and 3 is 17. So he's at 51. I'm at 6 and 5, or 10, 16, 23. Then I'm at 13. And then 5, 5, and 5 is 15. That would be triple. He's routed. So what happens when he's routed? Well, here we go. He only retreats, and they just switch to column, and they run away. That's it. So, when he gets off the board, I will, let me, let me get this clear. When a side's force route, immediately destroy all of the battlefield garrisons and fortifications, 
All its mobile forces must choose the retreat battle plan until they exit the battlefield by moving behind their reserve region. So retreat, retreat, retreat. If they exceed the number that can get into that area, destroy the force. So one of these is going to get destroyed automatically. And then uh, as each force exits the battle, return to... Mo uh, uh, to one randomly selected friendly controlled or uncontrolled area adjacent to the battle area. Um, and if they can't, then they're destroyed. So that is good news. All right. So advance the battle turn counter. Done. Insight activation. I have none left for insight. Select and place my French battle plan. Well, Nan Sute is going to charge. Done. And now he, it does not matter. It does, but you still, it does matter. He still draws three. Are you kidding me? Come on. I'm going to shuffle these. Okay. Let's try this again. And if I draw it again, so be it. Oh, that's one too many. It does not matter. There. There. You're going to shuffle it at the end every time. So, okay. So, he didn't draw any special ones is what we're uh, looking at. So, all of these guys retreat. One of them will be destroyed. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's eight. Two, four, six, eight. Destroyed. Done. So, now, for me, these guys will activate and advance. This guy will advance advance, and then attack. He automatically uh, activates and he hits on a seven or four. Double hits. That's a seven, it's a hit. So you know what? We're gonna take out one of the cavalry, dead. There we go. And now all of these guys, it's not really going to matter, but they're all in uh, column. So activates on seven, so I will try and activate them to be able to advance, okay? He activates and he activates. So they will advance. And then activates on eights. One, two, doesn't. Okay, so Beaumont's just hanging out and these guys will activate and you're allowed up to four. So I guess technically he couldn't have either anyway, and he knew that. So there we go. Uh, so we have done all of this. Route checks underway and advanced the battle turn marker. Done. So battle plans. Yep, we're going to choose the charge again. And now I've already shuffled these, so here we go. Correct, Chad, unfortunately. So one, two, and three. Those go away. Shuffle. Or shake, as it were. Moment. Oops. There we go. Fix that. There we go. All right. So his battle is there and there. So now he's going to activate. He will advance. And then... He will advance. And now with shock in the reserve, I believe it just, it will, they're in columns, so it's automatic. But I want to point this out. Let me find the page. Infantry and cavalry in their own approach region or reserve region automatically fail shock checks. Okay, cool. So now, here's an interesting choice. He has a cavalry, and the shock is minus three. So what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to choose one of the infantry to shock, he automatically fails it. So what does that mean? 
he flips, and then he must retreat. And he can't retreat, so he's destroyed. That's the joys of shock. So then he gets an attack. An attack in melee is plus three, plus three. So he's actually an automatic hit on the one because it's 10, seven. So anything lower than a seven hits two hits. Oh, try that again. All right, that's two hits. And I can distribute them however I wish. And I think we will go, ah. Yeah, we're going to kill the cavalry with, I could kill, yeah, we're gonna kill the cavalry with one hit and we're going to damage this with the other hit. Done. And then these guys will advance, the rest don't matter, nothing else matters. Route check, advance here, and we have to withdraw. That sucks. We were one hit short. All right. So there we go. That was about as good a battle as I could have hoped for realistically. I think that's pretty strong. I'm really, really happy with that. But now we have to do a withdraw. All right. So we're going to go ahead and roll, and we will see what happens with the withdrawal. So we're looking for a rejoin would be great, a one or a two. Uh, that's a 10, so we encamp. Okay, as you can see, encamp. So encamp says, is the first one on an encamp for me. Return the Napoleon counter and all the remaining forces to the campaign battle area. Do not start a new battle for the area during this campaign step. During this step. That's an important thing to note. All right. And he said an enemy, right? And all remaining forces, yeah. So, he goes to Jenna. I'm grabbing all the forces real quick. All right, so this is the one example in which, oh, I for, should have put that out there, but I think we knew where that was. So now we're done with resolve battles. Now force march. Um, I have four, I have four supply points now. One is going to be Ney moving here. So that's one. Wait, whoa, whoa, no, no withdrawal? Hold on, wait, what? During route? Really? Hold on. Oh, that's right, ignore the battle turn track. Continue resolving the battle turn until all the routed forces are destroyed. Fair point, or have exited the battlefield. So technically what would have happened is, I couldn't have done anything, okay? Um, so taking a look at this real quick. Thank you, I forgot, I forgot. When, uh, when they're routed, they do not do that. So here, insight activation, there is none. I would have gotten a battle plan, he would have drawn, and then he would have escaped. He could, uh, because the reason I'm pointing this out is there is no battle plan with a single battle plan quantity that I would be able to resolve before the enemy. So unfortunately, I wouldn't have been able to choose any of those that matters. So, but what does happen is he has to bug out to an adjacent area. So, here, 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 or here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it is random, I believe. Take care, Dapper.
Return the mobile uh, to one randomly selected. Yes. All right. So we'll roll. That's a one. Oh, sorry. So uh, can't go there. So I guess it would have been one through three, four through six, seven through nine. So he will go there. Check that. Thank you for the correction. All right. Good call. All right. So made a couple mistakes, but we've caught them. So good job, Peanut Gallery. Thank you for that. All right. So I paid my one. So we are uh, force marching. He has two damaged units there. I really want to kill them. A lot. Is it worth the supply points? I think so, because this way they're off the board and I don't have to worry about them uh, healing. So therefore, looking at my troops a moment. One, two, Uh, three, and Napoleon's going to come with him. Yep, so that'll be all three supply points. So that stack will all go there. There we go. Yep, feel pretty good about that. All right, so I have force marched, and now we're going to have another battle here. In Leipzig. Just doing a little cleanup here real quick. All right, so... All right, so Fog of War. He has four points, uh, four supplies, so he's going to spend two of them. He gets a plus two. Yep, here we go, plus two. That's four, two plus two. <laughs> so four is pay two supply points to add one, any one French recruit to one French occupied area. Uh, yeah, I have no supply points. Glory to Rome! Because we could have gotten a six cannon out for two points. That sucks. Arr. All right. Oh, by the way, that was a four, so that's going to be three battle turns. I don't think it'll go that long. Envelopment check. Two, four... I'm at more than 12. So, guess what? Enveloped. So, what does that mean? They're destroyed. Battle's over. Done. Okay, cool. That was fun. All right, good. That was good. All right. So, we've resolved the battles. French resupply. All right, so I gained seven supply points. There is two of them, and that is five more for a total of seven. All right, so for resupply, 
I can refit to heal basically any unit that I wish. So I could spend four of those to flip these. And then I can buy forces out here uh, based on their strength value. So I'm going to spend one point to go ahead and bring in the baby recruit for back here in Munich. That's done. Then, do I spend the four to flip them? Or do I bring in more units? I wish I had seven. I would bring in a four cannon. I definitely want a cannon. The question is how good of a cannon on this. Um, I don't think... Uh, that cannon's awfully nice. That big one. Um, I think we'll bring the five in. No, I lied. We're going to bring the four. We'll go ahead and put that in here with Nay, and then we'll bring in another recruit. And this recruit will come there. And that's going to be all six of my supply points. Done. So enemy orders. Well, here's the nice thing. Let me show you guys this. So the enemy orders are right here. It says, roll for groups of four forces in the same area. He has no forces on the board. So he's done. Okay, so that's enemy orders. First time I've ever had that happen. So that was, that was nice. Hi, Robert. Resolve battles. Okay, done. And now enemy resupply. Roll for every city not held by the French. Okay, so I hold this city, I hold this city, I hold this city. So those five I do not yet. So in hindsight, that's probably what we could have done. Eh, mistakes were made. All right. Okay, so we're going to roll based on this chart, okay? So, in fact, let's go ahead and bring it up there so you guys can see it. See that chart a little bit closer, shall we? Hey, that's pretty good. You guys should be able to see that, yeah? All right, so roll for each city. So, we'll go ahead and start, uh, uh, we'll start far away. So we'll start here in Friedland, okay? Uh, that's a seven. And a seven says two reinforcements. We are not off to a good start here, guys. Okay, so the reinforcement cup. So we have that, a six, six, and a six, four cavalry. Uh, that, that was not ideal. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll roll Warsaw now. Four. That's, that's a little bit better, I think. And a four is one reinforcement. That is twice as good, I would argue. Okay. All right, just shuffled, so. All right. That's a cannon. Okay. It's a recruit, though. And notice, it's no damage side, so there's that. One shot. Okay, cool. Danzig. Arr. All right, here we go. That's a five. Uh, that'd be a reinforcement as well. Okay. Another six, four cavalry. But at least these are one shots. At least there's that. Uh, Berlin. You know what I would really like? How about just three supply points? A nine or a ten? Oh, other hand then. Nope. A three is one reinforcement. There we go. Conscript. That's a little bit better. 
a 2-1. That's nice. Uh, all right, and now Dresden. That's a 5, and that is one reinforcement. Okay. All right. A conscript cavalry. There we go. That is his resupplies. And there was nothing else damaged that would flip over to its non-damaged side. That is the end of the first turn. Now, obviously, that was a massive battle that took place, so it's not going to be quite that long. Um, oh, yeah, done. All right, cool. But he didn't get any more supply points. That's good. Notice I'm out of them, though. And I also forgot to buy a scout. That may end up coming back to bite me, but we'll see. So... Advance the turn counter. Done. Okay. So now moves. Oh, and Napoleon was there in Leipzig. And during the uh, force march, he's allowed to move for free as well, by the way. Um, let me actually double check that. Yeah, Jason to his current area. Yep. All right. Good. Okay. Well, um, Azuro will come here into Pilsen. All of these guys are going to move into Dresden. Are they? Hold on. I need 18. That's 18. You know what? In a moment. It's not exactly how that's going to go. Bezier will move from Leipzig up to Berlin. The others will come here. Ney is going to come down and join Napoleon there in Dresden. All of these guys are moving into Leipzig. All of these guys are moving in to Berlin. Done. I think so. Uh, yep. I think that I think that works. So that's all my moves. Now we resolve battles. So I'm going to just from a mechanical standpoint, uh, just to be able to show you guys this. He has one. I have thirteen, fifteen. I have eighteen. So we're just going to roll for the fog of war. Now I get to choose the battles. I'm going to choose this battle first. And the reason I'm doing that, is, actually it doesn't matter. So we're going to actually go to the fog of war. And because it's going to be an envelope, I'm going to just go ahead and roll and we'll see what happens with that. Okay. So we're looking at this and he only has two supply points. So he doesn't get any bonus rolls or bonuses to his rolls. So he rolled a two, and a two says, I gain two supply points. Now, notice that it doesn't say transfer two from the enemy supply. I just gain two supply points. That's awesome. Okay. That's good. Done. And then, do I have triple him? Yes, clearly. So he dies. That's the end of the battle. Okay. So that's that. Then... I will fight this battle. He is at 2, and I am at 18. Okay, so now, again, he doesn't have, so he's just going to roll on the Fog of War track. Okay. 
oops, chart, I mean not track. That's a five. And the five is I can move Napoleon to this battle area from another area. Well, he's already there, but nothing else happens. And he has two. Do I have triple two? I do. He dies. Done. That's the end of that battle. Okay, good. Just again, instead of moving them down to the battle track and all that, it just doesn't make sense. So they were enveloped, they're done, and now they've lost those cities. Okay. So now I can force march. Now this is kind of an interesting idea. Do I want to force march? And Napoleon can freely move to an adjacent area. Ah, damn it, he can't be a part of that. For those two supply points, I could try and take over Danzig, and I think that makes sense to do that. And bring on another battle. It's a bit of a risk but it's one less city that he would hold. And I think it's worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend two supply points to go ahead and do that. So that is my two free supply points. Might as well, right? Oh, exactly like Chris said. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, unfortunately, 11 isn't 12, which would be triple that, unfortunately, but tis what it is. All right, so then uh, resolve a battle. Now, this battle is going to take place, but let's go ahead and do the Fog of War. Again, he doesn't get a bonus, so let's just roll low. That's a 5, and the 5 says I can move Napoleon to this battle area from... Oh, that actually worked out really well. It's only going to be two battle turns, but that was a really important one. That really worked out well. So I will move Napoleon up there. So the battle will take place here in Danzig. And Napoleon, because I get extra battle plans, that's why having Napoleon come up matters. All right. All right, so, envelopment check, I have 11, he has four. It's not quite triple, bummer. Uh, I have three, he has three, because Napoleon's there. I cannot buy any extra, because I have no supply points. Select insight counters. Tempting. Tempting to buy uh, the sweep, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, however... I think I will do the front, which means I can do this. Do I want to? Because that still allows me two more to be able to buy. Uh, place all enemy forces in a reserve or the approach. No. Morale. I'm not too terribly worried about that. Um, engineer is moot because he doesn't have garrison or uh, fortification. And duration... I, you know what, actually, I am not going to do that because I don't need to. Assuming that he advances, I don't need to. But, you know what, if that's the case, why not take supply points from him? If I have nothing better to do with this, then why don't I do that? So the raid... I believe I have to activate, but let me double check that. No, automatically in, uh, activates in the first battle turn. Roll and just see how many I take. Obviously, if I take three, he only has two. I could only take two. Um, I'm assuming he's going to advance, so I will be able to charge and kill him but I don't want to assume, and I might as well try and take some supply points. So let's do that. So that is the insight, so I'm actually down to two there. All right, place my forces done, place this forces done, insight activation here. Let's go ahead and roll. That's a six. That is, I take one supply point from him. That kind of sucked. Okay, so he's down to one, but hey, one less he has and one more I have, so I'll take it. Done. And now, 
I will select, I'm going to select charge for him, and I'm going to select flank there. Since I have two left, because Napoleon's there. So now we will shuffle his, draw three. One, two, three. Well struck, all enemies, he gets plus three when attacking. All right, plus three, plus zero. I'm gonna draw one more. Ha! Ah, ignore the first hit. Can we stop with drawing that damn chit? And wedge. All right, we're going to randomize which of these he gets. That one. Wedge says he has to activate first. So on a six or lower, eh, he doesn't activate. Done. Okay, so he doesn't get to attack, so that goes away, but he does get to absorb one hit. Yeah. All right, so now I get to activate, so he's going, Cav, advance with shock, nothing, advance with shock, nothing, but he gets to attack. He hits on a six and a three, and the first hit is on close ranks. Okay, so a six and a three, respectively. That's a two, that's two hits. That's one hit there, and that's two hits there. He dead. Fight's over. Danzig is ours. Woot. All right. So that was Resolve Battles. Now, French resupply. I get seven more points. That's five, that's seven. All right, so now what do we wanna do? We can recruit. <sighs> we have a total of eight points. I'm gonna spend four of them To eight nine. To flip that. Check that. I am not going to spend the two to refit him. He's going to stay as that is, I think, for now. So now what? So we have six points. We can save them so that we can get more. Uh, and Napoleon's up there. It's a little bit, little bit risky having him that close to the front lines with the big army behind still. Um, I'm going to spend three to recruit there. And we have three left. Just so we have one counter out of here. Okay. I think we keep the three. Yeah, I say we keep the three. I'm good with that. All right, so we are done. So it is his turn, technically. So, enemy orders. Okay, so now he does have them. Roll for groups of four. So in other words, if there were more than four in a stack, I would randomize and break them up into stacks of four. But as it is, there's two here, there's one there. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Warsaw. So we will roll here based on that chart. So here we go. He rolled a six. And I should also point out, he does have a supply point, so he's going to spend it, so he gets a plus one on all his rolls. So that is a six, so we're spending that one point, that's going to be a one. Let's go ahead and bring this up here, and I'm actually going to zoom in so you guys can see that. All right, so you'll see he had one supply point, so roll the six, so it's actually a seven, he advances. And when he advances, he's going to advance...
towards the closest French force and then move the group towards the French occupied area that has the lowest total combat value. All right, lowest total combat value. Uh, so that's at seven, that's 11, that's more than seven. So he's gonna move this way, so he is going to advance to Breslin. Done. Okay, so now we're going to roll now for Friedland based on that chart. And a plus one again, so that's going to be a six. Plus one is a seven, which is an advance, which is the exact same thing. And now, the lowest force. This is seven. I would argue that it is the same amount to go here. I don't know on that case, whether it would be to Ailan or to Thorn. Uh, I'm going to argue that it's random between those. Um, I think so, because the rule book's not clear on that. So I'm going to go 1 through 5 here, 6 through 10 there. All right, so he's moving to Thorn. Done. Okay. Oop, wrong one. There we go. Okay. Uh, now he resupplies. So his resupply for each city not held uh, by the French. And the only two are those two. Okay? Because I hold Danzig, I hold Berlin, I hold Dresden. And I should point out, it, when it says held, meaning you can't have just been the last one to go through. You must have a troop there or some sort, even if it's fortification or garrison. Hence why I have the recruit back here. So I have there, 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 and there. So we're good to go. So these two. So we'll go ahead and roll for Warsaw first. And let's go ahead and roll. That is five. So this one, and again, we will... And no bonus on rolls, so it's going to be a one reinforcement for Warsaw. Shuffle these. All right, that's not too bad. And then Friedland, we will do the same. That's a 10. That's a big, scary number. Uh, that looks like three supply points. Okay. Hey, the way I see it is that's just more supply points I can steal. Done. So he has no damaged units, so he doesn't refit any of them. Uh, they're free for him to refit, so he's done. So we go into, hey Shaz, the next round. And boy, it's a doozy. So a couple things here. Always hold Munich. Dresden and Berlin from the end of November uh, 1806. So, Berlin, Dresden, and Munich. I have to hold those three for the rest of the game. So, by the end of this turn, starting at the end of this turn. Done. But now, start of the Winter War, place in December 1806. So France, in Napoleon's area, gets these two units. So Napoleon, these guys are up here in Danzig. And they were uh, Walther and uh, Hewlin, a couple of, or one infantry, one cav. So there we go. Okay. Then, before we place the rest of the units, defeat is I have to hold Warsaw from the end of December 1806 on. So I have to get here by the end of this or the game is over. My objectives are to hold all the cities.
OK. Done. So now Russia and uh, Poltsuk. Uh, yes, the big Russian force, and I do mean a big Russian force, is coming down into Poltsuk. OK. And then the smaller Russian force is going into Friedland. So that's only five units only. And then the small Prussian force goes into Thorn. There we go. All right. So that's what all that was for, was for the beginning of this. Okay. A moment. Lemon, because of all the talking today. Um, hey, we haven't had any new patrons today. Let's change that. Go to pledgehc.com, support the show. If you guys are enjoying this, give it a thumb down below. I certainly would appreciate it. And uh, how's it going today? Like, are you guys able to follow along for those that are unfamiliar with the game? Hopefully it's all making sense and you guys are... Doing a pretty good job of following along, I hope. <laughs> All right. All right. So we have advanced the turn counter. Now we move. I have to take this by the end of this uh, turn. Okay. This is not going to go how I want it to go. That is a really big, scary force. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and three. So that's three different activations right there. Oh, this is going to hurt that that is that far away. Okay. Uh, let's let's start at the front and move move the other direction. I think. Uh, these guys are going to advance into Elon. He is going to advance to there. Stay. So all of that is done. These guys will come down into Breslin. He will stay behind. All of these guys will move forward. He's staying behind. He's going to advance to here. And these guys are going to advance to Breslin. Okay, good to hear. Rocky, Chris, Jonathan, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Um, whoo, gonna be close. Gonna be close. All right. Yeah, we need supply points bad for this one. All right, so we are done moving. And let me double check um, one last thing real quick. Okay. By the way, Napoleon, even if the force is locked down, he can still move to an adjacent area, but that's done. So Napoleon, unfortunately, won't be there for this battle in Breslin. And currently, we do have triple his force there. He has four. I have 25, right? 10. Yeah, I have 25. So he's going to roll for Fog of War. 
And because of his fog of war, he has three supply points. And note that he needs four to get a boost on his roll. So whatever he rolls, he rolls. So here we go. A seven. A seven says transfer two of the enemy supply points to you. We need supply points. Hell yes. So I will be at five and he will be at one. That was an awesome, awesome roll. And he's enveloped because, that, remember, the next check, don't forget, uh, after we do the, uh, the Fog of War is the envelopment check, which is triple. I have triple four is 12. I have 25. It dies. Done. The Battle of Breslin is over. Okay. So that's all the battles. So now, Force March. I have five supply points. One, two, three, four, and five. That'll be to do that. So that's all five supply points. I have to take Warsaw and hold it by the end of, permanently, at the end of the uh, round. It says hold Warsaw from the end of uh, December 1806 onward or the campaign ends in defeat. So I not only have to beat this, which I'm going to be able to uh, envelop him as of right now. However, I still have these three stacks that I'm going to have to worry about during his, the enemy orders here, okay? And unfortunately, Napoleon is stuck way back here, uh, even though we have raced ahead to Warsaw because we've had to, okay? <sighs> All right, so fog of war to be able to begin with. Again, he only has one supply point, so whatever he rolls, he rolls. That's a four, and a four says pay two supply points to add any one French recruit to one French occupied area. That'd be awesome, but uh, again, I have no supply points because I just use them to move that force in. He has a, a strength of three because, remember, after the, uh, after the fog of war, we're checking for envelopment. Envelopment is triple. He has three, I have nine, or he, he has three, triple that is nine and I have 25, he dead, done. Okay, so there's that. And now French resupply. I gained seven supply points. What I'm thinking about is I can only get one of those cannons. And honestly, I would rather have a cannon than I would a Giro, meaning I don't want to get a garrison or a fortification here in Prague to release him. I would rather have a cannon. Um, so now it's just a matter of what cannon. I think I will get the five. So that's going to cost me five supply points. So now the question is, where do I put it? I'm either going to put it here in Warsaw or add it here into Ilan. Um, and I misspoke earlier, by the way. In order for me to do better than Napoleon, I would have to do all the objectives this turn. It's whatever is the visible one, which isn't probably going to happen. It doesn't look like this turn, so... I think this, I have to protect Warsaw, so it makes sense to put the camel. Um, <laughs> hey, Jess, I came back to silence and sighing. Seems right, yeah? Things aren't going terrible, I will say that. Um, but having this massive force way back here sucks right now. All right, I'm done with the resupply. I'm keeping my two supply points done. So enemy orders, here we go. We will start top to bottom, okay? And technically, uh, so that is a stack of four, two, three, four, and all of these are the same, aren't they? They are. So we will do like that. These are not 
I want to randomize how these are distributed. So a moment on that. Oops. Yeah, doesn't matter. There and that. Okay. So stacks of four. One, two, three, four. And I will get these onto the right sides. Hold on. So we have three infantry and a cav for this group in Pultsuit. Then it will be one, two, three, four. So that's two cav and two infantry for that group. And then it is three infantry in this group. Okay. All right. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six groups up there. Okay, so now enemy orders. This is going to be really, really key as to what happens. All right. All right, so now let's go ahead. All right, there we go. So that's his orders there. He has one supply point, so he's going to spend it for a plus one on all of his rolls. That kind of sucks. All right, so that goes away. All right, so we'll one, two, three, four, five, six in that order. We'll start with the top group. Here we go. Uh, what do we want? Hold on, let's look at these. What do we want? What's hold? Uh, pretty sure there's no hold. Okay. All right, well, hell, let's just roll and see what happens. That's a nine. French-held city moves twice. Okay, group one. Towards a French-held city. This is a French-held city, and that is a French-held city. Danzig is. And it's towards the smallest force, I believe. The closest objective that is held by the French with the lowest combat values. If you do not hold any, treat it as an advanced two. Now, let's take a look at this. Now, this French-held city has that force there. This French-held city has that force there. I would make the argument this force is smaller than this, even though it's going to put it into fighting with this force here. So therefore, I would say that this group has to move here. I would prefer it to move south, but I think this makes more sense because it's looking at the lowest held city with, or the combat value of the lowest held city. It didn't say with intervening troops in between. So therefore, this, troop, this group would move there. That's how I'm reading that, all right? All right, so the next group is that one single solo Russian force. That's a four, and a four says uh, a French-held city. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. enemy-held city. I did it again. Stop. Enemy-held city. Hold on. Enemy-held city is this one. Not French-held. I forget. I'm not the enemy. He is. So hold on one second. Enemy held, okay, move the group one area towards the closest objective that is held by the enemy. If he doesn't hold any, move that group, da 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 da. If there are no, then the group holds. So check that, enemy held city. That's what he, what did he roll the first time? That's French held city. No, that's, that was right, I'm sorry. That's a four, which is actually a five. And the five is a French-held city. Sorry, I was looking at the number two, so never mind, ignore me. French-held city, same rules apply. French-held city uh, with the lowest group, that would be here, so that stack is just going to join that right there. Now, it's not a double advance because he gets pinned by that group. Okay, so there's that. I rolled a 9, which makes it a 10. Oh. Okay, so I rolled a 9. Hmm. 
Okay, let's back this up. Sorry, guys. I rolled a 9, which means it's a 10. It's an advance 2. Okay. In advance... Towards the French occupied area with the lowest combat value that the group can move into. If the group cannot... Okay. So, that is going to be 30. This is lower than 30. So, yeah, this group's going to move there, but it's going to get pinned by that. So, that's the original one. The one that I just did was towards the French-held city with the lowest combat value, so that group will move there. Done. All right. We are good. Now this group. I really would like enemy-held city. I would like a two. Which means a one. That's a seven, which is plus one, which is eight. Eight says advances. Where does he advance to? The lowest value. Lowest value will be there. This is troublesome because Napoleon's there. Just saying. That, that's troublesome. Okay. Take care, Jonathan. All right. The top group here. That's a one. Plus one is a two. And a two says towards an enemy-held city. This group will come up into Friedland. Okay. Not the worst. Not the worst result. Next group. That's a five, which is actually a six, which is towards a French-held city. A French-held city. Hmm. Hold on. Towards the closest. This is the closest. So therefore he would move there. And finally this stack here. That is a four, which is really a five, which is to a French held city. And that group will go there. Well, we have two battles that uh, are really, really big. We'll start with this one. If this ends in defeat for me, then the game is over. Okay. The battle for Warsaw is about to begin. All right. So he has no supply points. Yeah, Danzig is, is terrifying. Or not Danzig, but... Uh, uh, Ile is, is really, really scary. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Here we go. The Fog of War roll. No adjustment. That's a 7. A 7. Transfer two of the enemy supply points to me. Awesome. He has none. Womp womp. All right. Eh, oh, well. So, next, envelopment check. I'm pretty sure that there's not going to be one. Either way. So here is the battle. So he has 10, he has 10, and 23. I don't think I have 69. I do not. And he doesn't have triple me, so there we go. Determine the battle land, uh, plan quantities. I only get one because Napoleon is not here. Do I wish to buy any additional? Yes, but I'm going to hold off. I'm not. So done. Select insight. I cannot because Napoleon's not here. Place my French forces. These guys are going to hang out back here. And then these four are going to go there. All right, Nay. He's leading this here. Here we go. Place the enemy forces. So these will get randomized. Four in the approach and the rest in the reserve. Oops. So two, three, four, and the rest back here. These are all line troops. All of them are line troops. Oops. Really? There we go. 
All right. Insight activation. There is none. Select the French battle plan. Well, just in case. Uh, my grape shot will go there. Onto my cannon. All right. Done. So now he gets three. And they're all lined, so it's going to be random between the front row. One, two, three. Okay, so we will randomize. So the first one will be that. And two, four, six, eight. That's a one. So that will be here. Then that one, and then that one. So one through three. Ah, the only thing I couldn't roll. That's a four. One through three there. And then one through five, six through ten. There. Those three activate first. We'll go left or right. If cavalry, no roll. Advance. If one... Or zero or one, change the line, then attack. He's done. This one, if in line, no roll. So he needs the roll on a, activate a seven or lower. He did not activate. Done. Then here, if infantry, he is, no roll. Switch to column, advance at shock plus, minus three, and then attack. He's done. Then here, if in column, no roll. He advances, and then these three all advance. There we go. He's done. So now, they're going to hold. These two are going to fire. Now, we haven't had cannons yet. This is the first cannon. So he'll roll, and these hit on the closest available. Awesome. So a four or less, he needs the roll. Missed. And then, the grape shot, he gets a plus two, plus one. So that's going to be on a 7 and a 1, respectively. That's a 3, so that's one hit. So the one hit can be applied, my choice, any of these, at the lowest, and they're all lined, so you know what? Let's go ahead and kill a 7-4, uh, so there goes that cavalry, done. Oh, shoot, hold on. One other thing I forgot is transfer two of the enemies. So that was seven and five. So that was five battle turns. Okay. So route check. Still not going to be at triple. So none. Advance the turn. Done. Select the French battle plan. We're going to do... Uh... Hmm. Yep, we're going to do the same thing again. Yeah, we are. All right, so now enemy battle plans. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. All right, cool. First two, get them. So... We'll go that one and that one in that order. I think that works out easy enough. And then it does not matter. They're all identical, so we'll just go to the left. There we go. Done. So switch to color. He needs to activate on a 7 or lower. Add to the 10. He does not activate. Awesome. That goes away. This one, if in column, no roll. All right. So cavalry advance at a shock minus 3. Done. Then advance, shock minus three, and then switch to column. Done. So now at minus three. I get to choose. However, it is always in weakest to highest. Line, veteran, or elite. So it's going to be on him. So his activation is a four or lower, but his shock is a minus one. However, he's in column, so he doesn't actually roll. So what does that mean? He flips, 
and he would retreat, but he dies, unfortunately. So he's done. He just dies. So what happens? He comes back out there to be able to be recruited again. Okay. But that's it. He's done. But this is, this is good. I'm okay with that. He did not activate, so he's done. Then here, if in line, no roll. He needs to activate at a 7 or less. So he activates 7 or less. He failed. He's done. These three, two or further, so they will all advance there and done. So my turn. Now, we're in melee. I don't think we've seen melee yet. Melee is plus three, plus three on attacks. Okay. So, Nesute will go ahead and melee against uh, Pauline, or Pauline, sorry. That's a 10-7. So, cavalry only take one hit. That's an automatic loss. So, it was a... Uh, it was a suicide charge, apparently. So, suicide rush. He's dead. He's done. Now, these guys will fire. These guys are not going to advance. So, Ney and Lefevre uh, Le 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 are not going to. So, they're done. So, this guy will fire. Hits on a four or less. He missed. And then, again, a 7 and a 1, respectively. Ah, uh, that sucked. All right. Done. So, route check. We are going to check it at this point. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I need 45. I don't have 45. Uh, 10, 27. So, okay. No route check. Advance the battle turn counter. Done. French battle plans. Hmm. So if I were to advance on all three of these, that would be three shocks and three damages. There's one thing I need to look up here is if you're in melee, can you advance again? I don't think you can. because all you do is melee and disregard any other battle plan. So, all right. I don't think the grape shot is smart at this point. And assuming that all these guys advance, that would put me at four there. So I think... Engaging with Lefevre makes sense. So that's what we're going to do. There. All right, so now he gets his three. This is the uh, turn that's going to be uh, decide the Battle of Warsaw, I have a feeling. So it's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So... Officers, he gets a plus three, plus three, or a plus three on his activation, meaning everybody's going to activate for him, okay? And then it's going to be on any three of these, and it does not matter because they're all identical. So we'll go there, we'll go there, and we'll go there. And I get to choose the order in which these activate. Uh, wow, that was a crappy draw. He's going to go here. If in column, no roll. Advance, switch to line, and attack. Okay, so he hits on a three or less. Come on, big numbers. Five. He missed. Good. Okay. So, that's done. He is going to, the enemy is two or further, so he's going to advance, and that's all. Done. Then, if infantry, no roll. Switch to column, done. 
advance at a shock minus three and then attack. He attacks at a three or less. Missed. Good. Then here, switch to column. Advance and attack at a two, plus two, plus two. So he hits on a five and a two respectively. Come on, big number. Yes, he missed. And then if it's zero or one, which he is, switch to line. Done. Awesome. That's about as good as I could have hoped for. All right. All right, so here we go. So now, what do we want to do? Nay is going to march. Ah, check that. Hold on. And I want to make sure whether or not... I believe I can activate in any order, but I want to make sure that the approach don't have to uh, attack first. I just want to double check that. In any order. All right. So the cannons are going to fire first. So the four cannon will fire first. He missed. Then the five cannon will fire. He hit. Unfortunately, he didn't have the grape shot. That would have been a double hit. That would have been nice. All right. So I can assign the hit on any of these that I wish. I will go ahead and flip. that there. The cannons have fired. Now, Nasute will go ahead and advance. If in column, no roll. And now there's shock. And it's my choice because they're all in line on who gets shocked. He's going to try for him, and then that, that shock, he needs to roll a three or a less to not be shocked. Oops, try that again. Six. So he was shocked, which means he flips and retreats. That's done. Then... Lefevre is, if in column, no roll. And I should say, uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, if in column, no roll. Advance at a shock minus two. So he has to roll a one to survive. He failed. So he flips and is retreats. Then he switches the line. And then he attacks at a plus one, plus one. But because it's melee, it's plus four, plus four, or three, three base, plus one, plus one on top of that. So it's a four, four. So that means he's a nine, four when he attacks. That's an eight. It's one hit. So the one hit will be on this one here, and that kills him. And he's done. Then Ney is going to... Advance, he's going to march, no roll because he's in column, and now he has to roll a three or less to survive. That's a five, so he doesn't. He takes the hit and must retreat. Done. All right. So now, let's check the route. He's at two, four, six. He's at nine. I need to be at 27. I'm at 12. And 9 is 21, and 6 is 27. He's officially routed. All right, so we never, we don't have to worry about this anymore. He will only retreat. Make sure, right? 2, 4, 6, 9, 27, 6, 13, 13 and 5 is 18, and 9 is 27. There we go. He's triple, so he's routed. So we don't worry about the battle turns anymore. 
So, select the French battle plan. He's going to charge. And done. So he draws his three. Oh yeah, I guess the column failed automatically. Good call. So here are the three. One, two, three. They don't matter because they are not any of the specials and retreating, or he's routed, so all he can do is retreat. So he runs, he runs, he runs. Oh, all turn to column, by the way. There we go. All right. So now the cannons will fire a four and a five respectively. That's one hit on a cannon and that's one hit, uh, oh, uh, on a cannon, done. So two hits uh, and it has to be on these. So it's going to be there and there, they die. The cavalry will advance at a shock, advance at a shock, he automatically fails, he's dead. And then he gets to attack. This is an important one. He attacks at a seven and four, so the double hit to be able to kill him. I need a four or less. Not one hit, unfortunately. So he got hit there. He advances automatically, and he uh, column, to, so he needs to activate, or he automatically activates and goes there. Done. Still routing, so then select the French battle plan. I only have one, unfortunately, so I can't do a grape shot before he gets a shot uh, because I would need two with the prepare. So it doesn't matter because the first thing he's going to do is retreat, and when he retreats, that's it. So my force holds. Only the recruits lost that. Warsaw held, so now, when we come out here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on where he retreats to. That's a six, so he's going to go to Thorn there. That's the end of that battle. Battle of Warsaw went well. Whew, all right, a moment. PledgeHC.com. Support the show. Whew. Here we go. Battle of uh, Ale? Alo? Alo? I'm not sure. Oof. Hey, Lau. I Lau? Yeah, I don't know. There we go. That's uh, in Napoleon's here. Whew. He has no supply points. Uh, so what do we want on this? I have two supply points. I would really like um, six. Six. <laughs> Here we go. That's a three. Four rounds, I gain a scout. That's a reroll as needed. Okay. So, three rounds and a scout. So, okay. All right, envelopment. I need to just... Shoot, I'm actually worried. I have 20 heat. As long as he's not at 60, he's not at 60. We're good. All right. So just, just to be clear, though, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 20, 34, 34 to 20. So he obviously has a clear advantage over me. All right. Battle plan quantities. Napoleon's there, so I have three. And I will spend the extra supply point or two supply points to get a fourth. 
So those two supply points are gone. So I have four. Wow, I really want cannons for this, but unfortunately, no dice. Uh, so let's take a look at the insight, shall we? So engineers doesn't matter. Sweep, I don't want to remove my troops from the battlefield. I think I need them out here to be able to absorb hits as well as to be able to lay hits. So I don't think I want sweep. Uh... I don't want front. I, don't, I, I want these guys. Yeah, I can't see that being good. He has no supply points. Morale? Morale actually kind of makes sense, maybe. And stalling for terrain doesn't make sense. And adjusting the duration of the battle might. I think I take morale. It's going to be a defensive battle for me. So I think I take that one. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all we're going to take. So if that's the case, that's going to leave me with three along with morale. And uh, these guys are going to be right here. Okay. So then... For him, randomize his. Four for the enemy approach. Is it four turns? Hold on. What was this? This was, uh, what did I roll? Oh, it was four. You're right. Thank you. Yes, I rolled uh, gain a scout. I rolled a three. Good call. Thank you, Robert. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four. The rest are back here. Okay. Whew. This has gone so well so far that I'm really, I really don't want this lost right here. Um, Okay. Insight activation doesn't happen. This just triggers when it needs to. French battle plans, I get three. We're going to take volley. And I will give it to him. A 7-5, that's good. Uh... I just don't think they're going to advance. I'll go ahead and put there on square. And I think that's it for this. I don't think I'm going to choose a third one. Eh, I guess. I guess I will do that. There we go. Done. Yeah, I'm really upset that there's no cannons uh, on this. I, I put the extra cannon down here to protect Warsaw. Had I recruited it there, that would have made a huge difference, I think. All right, so now he draws three. Here we go. Battle commences. Yeah. Actually, I don't mind that he got close ranks right now, honestly. So what does he got? He has line, line, line. And so it will have to be on those three. 
and he can't get one. So I'll just do it in the order they're out here. That's fine. There, there, and there. Without looking at that. All right. So if cavalry, no roll, advance. And if zero or one line and then attack, he's done. Then uh, he needs to activate. And he needs to activate. So that's a seven and a seven respectively. He failed in the second one. Succeeded. So this guy failed. He succeeded. So if a distance of one advance, there's not. Inventory attack and then attack and then switch to line. So the only thing he can do there is switch to line. Done. Then he will advance. Then here, only two of these guys will advance. One, two, three, four, five. So two, four, six, eight, ten. I'll just roll twice that way. That's the second one and the fourth one. Second and fourth. There we go. Okay. He's done. So now, I think I'm done. I think I will just hold. Yeah, that's it. No routes, advance the battle turn. I'm not attacking on any of those. No insight activation. And now my battle plans come into play. I think I'm going to keep it as is. I'm good with that. Yep. All right. So here we go. Oops. Hold on. One fell out. So I guess that'll be one more choosing. So there's one. There's two. So that will go there. That will go there. The third one will have to go on an L. And it does matter, so, aha, come on, enough with the close ranks. Yeah, you can tell uh, these, are, these are pretty legit draws here. This one, um, two, four, six, eight. So two, so that will go there. All right, so here we go. If in column, no roll, advance, switch to line, and attack. He hits on a five and a three. Come on, big number. Come on. Woo! Big enough. That'll work. Done. Here. If in column, no roll. Cavalry advance shock. None. Done. Then advance shock. And then switch to column. So he gets a minus three on a shock. My guys get plus three. So this is a wash. So they're going to go for shock. So the lowest value one has got to be here. So he needs to roll a five or less to survive, or else he uh, flips. So now, low number, come on, survived. No shock, and he switches to column, so that's it, meaning that's it, he's done. Okay, so then this guy, if in line, no, so he needs to activate, 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 activate. So we'll start here, seven, 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 six. And if he activates, he does nothing. So he's not actually going to do anything. It doesn't matter. Because even if he activates, he would attack and he can't attack. So he's done. So 776 to be able to advance. However, if in column, no roll. So those two will go. I need to roll a seven for him. He succeeded, so he advances. And then these three will advance as well. All right. So now we're in melee. Hmm. Uh, well, Walther is going to attack first. He gets a plus three, plus three. But because he's cavalry attack, he gets plus five, plus five total because it's plus two, plus two. Oh, shoot. Thank you. The column fails. So he, ah, 
You're right. Thank you. Yes, you're right. He should have failed this. But before he gets to do that, because he has square, he gets a pre uh, cavalry attack, so he gets to hit him first before he moves, before he activates. So pre cavalry attack, he's at a plus four, so he's at nine, so he's uh, five, so he's at a nine. Anything but a zero, he actually died. Nothing actually happened because of the square. So he's activated. That's done. Well, I put that on the right guy, didn't I? The fact that he's the veteran, which means he would have attacked first. So good call. So that saved me there. Uh, and now, Walther will go ahead and do a cavalry attack. He's not melee anymore. So he gets plus two, plus two. So he's at a seven, five. So one hit is all that matters. So he needs to hit on a seven. He missed. So he's done. Then Bessere is going to attack. Yeah, he needs to hit on a six or a three, or so a six in this case. He hit. He took the hit. He did. He's and uh Hewlin is not going to do anything. Done. Whew. All right. No routes yet. Advance the battle turn. Wave after wave. Here we go. In sight. Doesn't happen. Wait. He would have ignored the first hit. Shoot. Hold on. Forgot about this. So let's see. The first hit was on the horse before he went. So he will have flipped and gone back here. Because he would have failed his shock check in that case. Because this would have absorbed the first hit. Then he failed. He would have hit him for a single. So then his activation, if I wanted to, would have to happen. Hold on. Let me back that up. And that was, where was he? Right there. So I believe he was there, right? So if I want that to happen, I don't know if I want to. Ooh, hold on. That damn, oh, that, that draw sucked so bad. Glory to Rome on that one. Uh... I need him so he can't attack. Because these guys are going to shock him otherwise. Oh, that sucks. Okay. That sucks a lot. Okay. Done. So I advanced this. So select my plans now. Uh, square is going to have to happen. Pre-cavalry attack, so he'll get a shot at him. At a seven or less? Yeah. That will work. What else do we do? I think he engages. 
Ah, I really don't want these guys to advance if I can help it. Um, so he's going to volley. I'm going to go ahead and throw that there so that they can change formations if I want. All right? Done. All right, his draw. God, can we not draw that first hit is out. All right, so here we go. One, two, three. Thank you. All right. So first one that I drew, uh, I don't remember. So, all right. So it'll go one, one to the one of these guys. So I will have to one through three and we'll do them in, in that order. So wedge and wedge, doesn't matter. So one through three, or right. so that'll be on the second one and then one through five in the last one. Second and third, get those because they're in different formations. So that matters. All right, so he goes first, but before he goes first, square gets to go here. So pre-attack cavalry. So he hits on a seven or higher. We need to be able to hit this guy really bad. Or a seven or lower, I mean. Hit him. Mm. So square goes away. He's done. That dies because he dies. Done. All right. So then wedge. He has to activate on a six or lower. Uh, activates, switch to column, advance, attack, and then switch to line. So he attacks at a plus two, plus two, so he's at a six, two. That's a nine, he missed, he switches the line. Then here, he needs to activate on a seven. That's a nine, he doesn't activate. Done. And then he's in column, he advances. And all of these guys advance as well. Okay. So he's done. All right. So he's going to volley. If in line, no roll. He's in column, but he has an auto uh, activate because he's at a 10. He's cavalry, so he's plus two, plus two, which means he's seven, five. So, here we go. Low rolled be great. That's a six. Ah, it's one hit. One hit will be on him. Done, because they're both L's. So, that's done. Oh, I guess... Yeah, sorry, I had three. You're right, I was thinking I had four. Thank you, so that one wouldn't have come into play. Thank you, Paul. Uh, he's going to attack at a 6-3. That's one hit. Yep, there's, yeah, I'm good with that, done. So now the question is, does Hewlin engage? Because if so, he advances and will kill him. Then he turns the line and then he attacks him and probably will kill him. Because that would be at 8-4. Uh, 
But then they get a shot at him for shock. A lot. And that would only damage him. I need to be able to survive in case we rejoin the battle. So he's not going to engage. Done. All right, nobody's routed. Advance this. There we go. Battle plans. Well, here we go. Engage for sure with Hewlin now. There's one. Then he will charge, and the third one will be I don't want the square because he's too far away from him, so okay. I could actually, you know what? We'll give him a flank. That'll work. Done. Okay, done. So he draws. Here we go. Shuffling. I'm just trying to survive. I'm not expecting, there we go. So we'll just do this. That was one, that was two, and then the third one, they're all L's except for him. So one, two, three, four. That's a three, so that'll go on here. There. All right. So wedge, switch to column, advance. Attack at a plus two, plus two, and then he's going to switch to line. So, shock first off. And I automatically fail a shot. Shoot, I forgot about this. He will fail and go there. So then he attacks. Back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up. He has to activate. He needs to roll a five or lower. Come on, big number right here. Come on, big number. Nope, didn't matter. Damn it. So now, he will get shocked and fall back. So he comes in. He attacks at a four and a two. Big number, please. There we go, he missed. And then he switches the line. Okay, so that's done. Then here, if infantry, and he is, no roll. Switches to column, advance, and a shock minus three. Oh, this sucks. And because he's in column, he dies. He's cheaper to bring, oh. I wanna try and take out more. He's more expensive, but he dies. So Bessier got shocked, and now he attacks at a two or less. Oops. It's a three, he missed, and he's done. All right. He's going to activate first. If in column, no roll. Advance at a shock minus two. Here, he's dead. Then switch to line. 
and then attack at a plus one, plus one, but because it's melee, it's another three, so it's four. So that's a six, six, four here. So he just needs a six or lower to hit him. He missed. That hurt. Because he's in melee, we disregard that, so he just hits. So at a 3-3, three, three, so he, he needs an 8 or lower. He hit. So he did. Done. And now here, only if the enemy's 2 away does that happen, so it doesn't. So that's it. So we survived a route check. I'm at 10. As long as he's not at... Th oh, hold on. And these guys haven't advanced. I apologize. Shoot, I forgot. Back up. Those three will go. He goes. He advances. He switches the line. And infantry attacks. So he needs to hit on a three or less. If he activated. I have to roll an activation. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. And he did activate, so now he hits on a three or less. And he did hit. Yeah. Uh, Hewlin's going to die. So that's done. And then he needs to activate at a 7, although it doesn't matter. I guess it kind of does, doesn't it? Because the flank now is going to happen. So hold on. Seven or less, he does, so he advances. So there we go. So getting back to this, if in column no roll, he advances, and then he advances again, and it must be against the P, so he dies on the advance shock, and then he attacks. He attacks at a 3-3, three, three, so he's at 6-3. Uh, that's a double hit right there. Hold on, that's a double hit. I'm going to kill one of his units. We're going to kill this one, so that's one hit. That's two hits. Done. There we go. So he's at nine, I'm at eight. We survived. We go into withdrawal. Okay. So, uh, enemy retreat would be, uh, would be really, really nice. So, a three to five. That's a four. That, that is a three to five. That's an enemy retreat. Hot damn. Paul says that just saved me from a route. E easy game, right? Here we go. So, enemy retreats. Return the Napoleon counter and the French forces to the map. Destroy all static forces. Remove, uh, return all enemy forces to one randomly selected enemy controlled or uncontrolled area. Okay. All right. So, the battle is taking place here. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. So, it would be here, here, or here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a six. One, two, three. So, here. All of the enemy forces. It wasn't pretty. But we survived. All right, enemy uh, resupply for each city. So here we go. He's going to roll. He has one city. That's a six. That's one reinforcement he gets. And that is a, uh, a recruit. There we go. Next turn. Whew! 
All right. All right, we get to move. Oh. We're going to leave. Yep. He's been grouchy all, all this time. So that's going to go here. There. Now what? I have this full force here. But somebody's got to stay behind, right? If I advance them. No, I don't get my... Uh, that was the enemy resupply. I don't get my supply points until here. So, not yet, Chris. Um, I just forgot to flip the counter. Whew, survived. All right. I think I leave the 7-6 back here. Nay? Really? I'm going to leave Nay? Or do I leave the cannon? Nah, I need to bring my cannons with me. Sorry. Nay, I can't believe I'm going to leave you in Warsaw, but I have to. All right, so they're going to come up here. These guys are going to fight there. They're going to come in. Uh, and I need Napoleon. Done. That's all my moves. Resolve the battle. Here we go. Battle of Thorn. Yeah. Oh. That was during uh, Resolve Battles, right? So one thing that did take place that I forgot is uh, this is going to flip over to its healed side. There. 3, 6, 9, 12. What am I at? 10, 29. Bummer. All right. Uh, he has no supply points, though. So he's going to roll. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. Here we go. Nay, leave. Nay. Uh, there we go. He rolled a two. That is, uh, I gain two supply points in three battle turns. Okay. I gain, so three battle turns, and I gain two supply points. That may come in handy. All right. All right. I'm not going to add any uh, battle plans, so three and three. And insight, you know what? Hmm. I think I am gonna try a sweep. No, I'm not. I'm not doing any insights, I don't think. The only other one that I'm looking at is maybe duration. Because these guys each take two hits. But I think I'll be able to route them before I can. So no, no insights. Done. So I'm going to place my troops. He will place his. They're all L's and they're all identical, so that makes that really quick and easy. So, my battle plans. Grape shot. And then just in case somebody gets squirrely.
he will flank. And he will volley. Better yet. He will volley. There's my three. Done. So his draw. Here we go. I see what you're saying, Chris, but I'm I'm just I'm being a lot more conservative because I'm expecting to be able to route him sooner rather than later. So here we go. His three. One, two, three. Okay. If in column, no roll. Advance. If one line, nope, he's done. Then, if in line, no roll. So he needs the roll to activate. So seven. He activated next one, seven, nope. And last one, yup. Okay, so this one does not activate. So this one, if one or less, or if one advance, nope, then infantry attack, nope, then attack, then switch to line, done, melee's done. Then he does not activate, and then he did, or he automatic, so there we go, he's done. Cannons, we'll do the four first. That's a hit. That'll be a hit. Uh, no, it's got to be on the front line. Sorry. There. Then here, he's at a 7 and 1. That's a 4. That's another hit. Uh, that's cool. That'll work. Done. So the cannons have done their job. Then... No, 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 done. I'm going to choose that for my three. So end of the round, route check, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need to be at 30. I'm at 10, 29. Not there. So we advance this. I assign my battle plans already. You know what? It's going to go there. Yeah, I like that better. All right, so his now. All right, so he gets three. One, two, and three, and there's another, so four. Hey, uh, there's our good friend, ignore the first hit. <clears throat> so, one will go there, one will go there, and one through five, six through ten. One through five, so that'll go there. All right, so here, if in line, no roll, he does have to, so a five or less. He activates. If one distance of one, advance, nope. Line attack, nope. Or I'm sorry, then attack, then attack, then line. Done. Here, if infantry, no roll, column, done. Advance, shock, and then attack. So he's going to attack at a two or less. Miss, he's done. And then here, if in column, no roll, so he needs a roll of seven, he's just going to advance. So seven or less. He failed. That goes away. Nice. All right. He's going to go for shock. So he's at uh, a two or less for that. And this is a shock, not a hit. He failed, so he dies. It's column. Doesn't matter. He died anyways. Then, he's going to advance and advance. And this is shock. He's going to fail automatically, so he goes backwards. 
Then he attacks. It's melee. So he's at a 10, 7. He ignores the first hit. So one's going to be automatic. So a 7 or less hits him again. That'd be two hits. So the first one goes onto that. The second one kills him. Done. Uh, he will advance. Then the cannons are going to fire a four and then a six, seven, one, respectively. That's a seven, so he missed. And then a seven, one. Uh, so, yeah, seven, one. So that's a hit. So he will go ahead and hit here. So that's done. Then he's going to activate oh, only if they're two away. He's not. Ah! So you know what? He doesn't activate. Damn it. All right. So we're done. So now... He's at four, I'm at more than 12, he's routed. So this comes off. That will go grape shot. That will be a charge. Ha! <laughs> there. Uh, hold on. You know what? I'm not going to do a grape shot. Instead, I'm going to do prepare. Resolve before the enemy. Right there. So that's three. Done. So his battle plans now. One, two, and three. Oh, come on. There. All right. So these go away because he's routed. So, well struck, he gets, when attacking, doesn't matter, that goes away, and all enemies on activation, doesn't matter, that goes away. So, awesome. So, this happens first, before the enemy activates, so he's two away, so he advances, and then advance a shock, and this automatically fails, he's dead. So then, he attacks, and it's melee, so it's plus three, plus three, so he's at a six, so a six or less, and he's dead. He dead. Gone. Fight's over. Good job, good use of preparation there. All right, battle's over. We took over Thorn. All right, so now we can force march. We have two, two left. I don't think we're going to. Uh, we can move Napoleon. I don't think we're gonna. That's it. So French resupply, I get seven supply points. Five and two. Okay. So we're at nine. We're going to get the big cannon in there for six of it. And we'll heal him for two and we'll keep one. Done. Ooh, hold on.
I'm going to spend one point. Hmm. And I'm going to move that four cannon back here with Nay. Just in case they decide to get squarely and end up over there. I think that's the right call. There we go. Done. So now, his turn. Enemy orders. He actually has... So, because those are different types of units, as far as uh, nationalities, they get into two separate stacks. That's a stack of four and a stack of one. All right. So now, uh, we'll roll uh, top to bottom. So there we go. Okay. So a moment on this. All right, he has no supply points, so nothing's going to happen there. Before, so we're just going to roll for him, and let's see what he gets. He rolled a one, and a one is two or less to an enemy-held city. Okay, an enemy-held city, so let's see. Uh, that would be Danzig, which is two away, and that is Warsaw, which is two away. Enemy-held city, and it is towards Lee, so I would make the argument because I did this. That is now 10 at the enemy held city. This is 3. Now don't get me wrong, they have a massive force in here that they're going to have to face, but um, it's towards the enemy held city that is closest, that is weakest. So it is this. So this force is going to come in there. Then here, he rolls. That is a 7. That's an advance. And the advance is towards the closest French force that has the lowest combat value. Uh, I would say that this is the lowest combat value between, yeah, definitely, between those two. So he will come here and that will not go well for him. He has no command point or no supply points, so we will fight this battle first. So here, all we're going to do actually is do the fog of war. So we will roll for his fog there. That is a five. And that is, I can move Napoleon to this battle from another area. He's already there, so I don't need to. He's at two. I'm at way more than two or way more than six. So he's dead. That battle's done. Enemy, not pretty. God, I did it again, didn't I? Enemy held city. These guys. We'll stay there. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I see it in uh, Slack. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. So, I again, because I'm the enemy of them, I keep thinking that. But enemy is, he just hangs out there. So that's it. That's resolved battles. That's the only battle there is. Okay. So now, enemy resupply, he's going to roll based on his resupply chart. That's a six, and a six says one reinforcement. And that is a uh, cavalry. There we go. He's done. Advance the turn marker. So, anybody that said inferior to Napoleon, I like your chances. All right, move. Um, that's all going to go. And that's all going to go. Done. Resolve the battle. We may envelop these bad boys. I'm not quite sure. So there's the forces. All right, so let's check the fog of war. He has no supply points, so he's going to go here. Uh, that's a two. 
Two says, uh, I gained two supply points and it'll be three. So two supply points. The battle is going on in Friedland. All right, good. Now, do we, do we envelop? I do not know. Let's look, shall we? He is at four, eight, 11, 19. So that's what, 57? That's 10. That's 20. That's 33. That's 40. That's 50. That's 59. That's 70. Uh, he's enveloped. Game's over. These guys die without a battle. They just capitulate. Oh, and uh, so we win inferior. So there we go. But you know what? Victory is ours. So uh, how about that hold by Napoleon in a uh, overmatched and outnumbered, not overmatched, but outnumbered force. Better tactics won at Elan, Elau, right? That felt pretty good, not gonna lie. I think I actually, I had to back up a couple of things on little mistakes here or there, but uh, I think I nailed that one. So, that felt pretty good. Yeah. Had some uh, had some nastiness go on there, but overall, uh, yeah, definitely a lot smoother. And yeah, um, I just have more time uh, to prepare for the, you get the idea, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think that went really, really well. I really enjoyed that. I think that was a lot of fun. Uh, didn't have any massive, I, I, I mean, there was one really big role there in the Battle of Elau, but... Uh, a, a la yeah, I, uh, you know, so there you go. That was fun. So, victory. That felt good. That felt really good, not going to lie. And a tidy, uh, what, a little over three hours for that, for the whole campaign. That was good. Yeah, good rolls when I needed them. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, I like the system. I think it's a, I think it's a really clever system, I think, overall. The, uh, I do wish, uh, I mentioned this in the last stream, the rule book, the way it's laid out, I hate. I really, really dislike that rule book. Uh, there, there are two player aids, actually, that are really good uh, on BGG. Um, there are three, actually, I would say. So the first one is the, the, by Stephen McDougall, this one. This is what I used on the, the first time, and it's, it's very detailed. And if you're learning the game, I think this one is really, really good. Once you know the game, and I apologize for not knowing this one, but this is a, uh, you know what? Let me go and find that real quick, because I kind of want to give uh, credit to the folks who are making these. So, a moment. Let me find this one. So, the one that I mentioned first is, his username is Largo68, that, that really detailed one. The other one is the rules resume by Spets. That's this one, which it's just, it's a lot less wordy. And once you know the game, this actually just quick reminders on everything. Uh, so that's really, really good. And then the other thing that I used was the battle plans and insight sheets. This one here. Uh, this is from Viking 1899. Uh, so that was really good. Uh, just, it, it basically just has everything because they're they're broken up into different areas in the rule book and I'm just not really a big fan of that and they're all right here on a concise uh, double-sided sheet um, so definitely recommend all of those okay yeah that closed rank is really frustrating that they absorb a hit uh, to begin with that that can be really really frustrating on the timing of that 
but but overall uh really really good system really it's tense it's stressful it's tight it's it's everything that you want from a solo system with not a ton of rules overhead as far as having to remember every excuse me having to remember everything but yeah the way the rule book is laid out is just atrocious I, it's terrible um i don't know why dan chooses to do that with the rule books um but hey job security so there's that okay so there you go uh Rommel and Alexander are definitely going to be more historical interest to me. Uh, I, I might bust one of those out next week, actually. Um, I think... Yeah, I don't know which one. Uh, they both really, really interest me. I believe I have them both. I know I have Rommel. I think I have Alexander as well. So I'm going to take a look at those, and I might add those to the schedule for next week, or at least one of them. So that would be good. Um, but yeah, should be a good time. So there you go. That is uh, Field Commander Napoleon. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed that. And the last thing that I want to check is I'm fairly certain this is out of print. Um, yeah, looking at the prices on BGG, I would say it's probably out of print. Uh, there's a copy for $65, $55. So it's, it's attainable. It's not crazy. There are some that are more expensive from that. So if you guys enjoyed this and you want to get a copy, secondhand is probably going to be your best bet. But there's also the other things that I suggested is have find people that own it, that have it rated low, uh, and offer trades or to buy it on BGG. Send them messages. Or, uh, or if they're available for trade, offer trades on there. All right? So there you go. Um, so there we go. Yeah, definitely going to see Rommel probably next week. If I have Alexander, I may go that route. We'll see how that goes. But there you go. So if you guys like this, give it a thumb down below. I certainly would appreciate the uh, the, the the thumb. It helps the channel. It, I, everybody who streams on YouTube says that, but we say that because it's true. It really does help uh, the algorithms on there for, you know, hey, just getting out there. So appreciate that. Uh, hit the subscribe button so that you, if you enjoyed this, I imagine you want to subscribe. So there you go. Hit the bell notification so you get notified whenever we go live. And if you think the work that I do here on the show is worth a buck or two, I certainly would appreciate it. Y'all check it out over on pledgehc.com. Support the show there. I really, really do appreciate it, y'all, very much. Uh, that's it. That's a wrap. I will be back tomorrow at 1500 Eastern Daylight Time with a solo play of The Gallerist from Vital Lacerda. Looking forward to that one. Hopefully you guys hang out with me tomorrow as well. And I will see you then. I'm off to go prep for that stream, actually, as we speak. So have a good day. Continue social distancing, being responsible, be smart, be safe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll see you all then. Bye.